After incredibly thrilling round number one, we turn here for the Gaming Drift Series here on Point of Esports for round number two at Metropolis, and we are going to be kicking things off here in just a couple of minutes with your top 24 competition. But in the meantime, we got a couple of minutes to kill before we get that underway. As you can see on screen, drivers are already on track, getting ready for these top 24 battles in the practice section. So glad we are out there because that could do us today for the continuation of the Gaming Drift Series. My name is Ian Flash, busy in the basket, supposedly. In a couple of short minutes, and this is music, as always in the production booth for us here at the Sports. Once again, guys, so glad to be joining us for round number two here at Autopolis. Last round in the really tight and narrow confines of the dots. So today, we've got a little bit of a wide course for you, set and ready to go at Autopolis. Lots of really fun swimming corners, lots of really tight sections as well. It's basically everything you would expect in a drift section. Right and center, which I will be showing you here on screen in just a couple of short seconds, a couple of outer zones, a couple of inside clips. But all in all, out uh, here at Atomos in Japan, it's a very, very thrilling course. Lots of speed and style can be shown on this layout over there in the hairpin section on the back half of the course. So you go ahead and check out on screen now. You can see the track set ready to go for you here. The track guide, two inside zones, four touch and goes. You can see it's a very long right hander to start it. We get a long sweep left to take it out. Continues that sweep all the way to touch and go number three before you transition hard in that very hard decel zone. 
with the hairpin to finish out the course at inside zone number two and then touch and go number four. So you can see on screen, guys, what you can expect for this round. The speeds are definitely up this time around versus the last round. The variation in style is going to be different compared to the last round. Drivers need to be a lot more on it with the momentum and the um, and the, the management of how their cars are going to be pointed on this course because any kind of slip up here with these kinds of speeds can easily see you finding your way out into that grass. So get all kinds of stacked competition set and ready to go for this top 24 starting in just about five minutes time. First up, we'll have Opio Lou versus Manji MSR, Manji Death Clock and Ronan Cervoni, Jalinder versus Yayo187, Zoo Ransom and Anti the Great and more coming today a lot of the names that we saw in previous rounds still out here for round number 12 as well many of the drivers who finished well in the previous competition looking to continue their season strongly with a wide variety of cars seeing a track you see some some vipers in tandem right now the gt3 version and the streetcar version going at it you got some some hondas in the back just a very good fun variation of cars here on track today which I am thoroughly looking forward to calling as well. We're now no strangers to the Gran Turismo Drift scene as this will be our second time in Podium Esports covering these events today. So it's a, it's a, it was a different ball game last time around, but now we're the, the meta is starting to kind of fall into our eyes. We're starting to, to really pick up what exactly these drivers are trying to do, what cars are good, which drivers are good. Now it's just a matter of actually going full send. Really, really looking forward to what is coming up here. In just a little bit. Cisco Scaramuza down in the booth as well, making the production happen for yes, the sir. as well. Also sitting in on his second time with us here in the Gaming Drift series. Really thr thrilling and riveting round number one, Cisco, and you got to imagine they're going to be coming at it full swing here for the second round of the time. And Ian, we talked about that meta, and this is going to be the case where we're actually dealing with a slightly new one because you see several of them out there, those brand new Camaro uh, ZL1 1LEs. Those are going to play a huge factor into this event here today. At least four to five guys running that brand new car. That's, that's going to affect us hugely because it's a brand new car. We don't know what to expect, but plainly there's something. Uh, they found something with that car, and uh, we'll have to see how it works out for them. Yeah, there's definitely a reason why a lot of the drivers are going to be picking that new chassis for this round. And I'm pretty sure we're going to be seeing just why they picked him here within the first couple of battles in 24. Last time we saw these guys again for round number one, Man and Van Venom was your winner. Very stylish leads for that SLR McLaren. Uh, it's just one of the more 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 fun drivers to watch last time around, throwing all kinds of angle that many other drivers really couldn't seem to quite find Cisco. But yeah, after uh, Van Venom taking yeah, that win. Sorry. Oh, it's okay. <laughs> go, go on, go on. But, no, I agree. And uh, looking to see what Madam Van Venom will do. Of course, one of the few guys in a streetcar versus uh, the GR3s and the GR4s that we saw very much so in that first week of competition. But I will say, you know, we're starting to see a couple more road cars. There are a couple, like you saw on screen, the uh, street-going uh, Viper. The Beamers are still very much in high demand as well, so plenty of variety here, but it's starting to lean more towards the road cars. And, you know, with Michelin coming into Gran Turismo now and working on the tires and everything like that, it gives a little bit more of a, uh, like I said, a variation, but also perhaps there's going to be a little bit different rubber. We see one of those Camaros actually on screen almost perfectly timed, actually. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I see behind the bar. In that brand new car. And it, you know, it's funny. It looks, it is a street car, but it does not look like one at all, Ian, with the wing, with the splitter, with the canards. That thing is just trucking around this racetrack. Yeah, that thing definitely screams the GT4 styling of uh, aero kit on that car. You can see it really keeping up well with the, the Viper there. A lot of the guys driving those GT3 or the GR3 spec cars use them mainly for the, the, the grip and the speed those cars provide. And you have that Camaro just absolutely all over the door of the Viper in that last run you saw for practice coming back down the hill. So it's going to be a lot of fun to see the variation these new cars are going to bring on the table. You see another Camaro right there on screen as well in the lead line for these practice runs. Just a couple of short minutes. 24 kicks off, guys, looking at maybe two to three minutes. 
we'll have competition kicking off here for round number two at Autopolis with the Gaming Drift Series live on Podium Esports. Thank you so much, guys, for joining in today. We hope you are just as excited as we are for thrilling door-to-door -door action at Autopolis. And boy, oh boy, Cisco, it's going to be a lot of fun transitioning back to Drift for the last couple of hours. I've been running over in uh, Jimmy Broadbent's solo um, that's solo, but uh, team event, the 24 hours of Zolder, uh, been behind the wheel ever since the, the last couple of hours here. Now I get to go ahead and settle into my seat, kick off some drifting action, and, and really settle down and maybe get my wrists a little bit of a break because I have 18 more hours to go <laughs> after this broadcast. So uh, this will be a, a nice little quick uh, intermission for me as I get to kick off some of the, the most fun drifting action you're going to be seeing on the Grand Trism side of things. Yeah, and uh, it sounds like it hasn't been quite the... Uh great run for you out there but certainly a little bit of a break always a chance to kind of reset it i know that very well as the uh the camaro there of uh that is gender there just kind of losing it out a little bit you're seeing these drift trains of course this isn't for competition these guys are just having fun at this point warming up the tires this is a very interesting course and i think one of the few courses that we've seen so far that is really built for this kind of thing of course you go back to when autopolis was built it was originally supposed to be an f1 style circuit so it's really cool to see the fact that you know obviously we've seen super gt we've seen uh the japanese biking championship take part here not the bicycling the motorcycle guys um but just all of those different disciplines taking and finding their own footing here at autopolis and just fact that you can see on the left side just how varied of a circuit it is you have those long sweeping kind of slow s corners that are very tilka-esque but this track is also very high in uh in as far as uh altitude is concerned it's a very low atmosphere area as well and with as much elevation change every little bit of that uh it, it helps benefit those cars that uh, are from, you know, this part of the world, you know, those high, those uh, smaller engine but high capacity cars. And I'm curious to see if that's going to be uh, anything here, if this kind of suits the Japanese cars a little bit more. Yeah, Japan and Elevation Changes, name a more iconic duo, Cisco. <laughs> yes, Autopolis <laughs> has been a ton of fun to watch other forms of motorsport, and you can see in the corners, as Cisco mentioned before, there is all kinds of fun. I mean, we're sitting there on that, that, that little uh, hairpin section on the bottom half of the course right there on the course map. That's where this layout is going to be taking place. Again, we'll get the graphic on screen so you can see exactly where all of the points are going to be for you. But a track like this, especially for drift, there's all kinds of sections you could have run this drift course. true favorites as well to go lost the there we go the video heat for you guys okay sorry about that quick little technical delay but battles getting right to kick off i think our first one is actually going to be on the line here cisco yes yeah, so we're going to try and get back over there as unfortunately the uh Switching software is uh, apparently having a little bit of an issue right now. It happens. These are uh, technical glitches that we do deal with. We are putting a lot of stress on this uh, system as, oh dear, <laughs> we've, uh, something's gone horribly wrong and we're trying to uh, get this back sorted as, uh, there we go. Okay. We have, there we go. We apologize for that technical on. delay. First battle on the line, as you can see, both drivers side by side getting ready to go here. This is going to be Opiolu versus Manji MSR. We saw them both in top 12 last round. Both drivers looking to start off their top 24 for round number two at Autopolis. Nice and strong. So we're just waiting on the command here from Tower. Send these guys. They might be waiting for the, the cameras to be positioned behind them here. And so here we go, that Corvette in lead. There we go. And off the line and initiates. Big angle for that lead driver. Oh, a little bit of a straightening in chase, trying to close back into the door of the Corvette, but transitions across the bumper a little farther back. The driver up in the lead, not quite getting to the outside zones. As you would expect, oh, a big straight in there for the Aston in chase. Unfortunately, it's like just really not able to keep to grips with that car. The Corvette up in the lead, not really getting to the zones that well. 
S and kind of getting bobbly left, right, and center in his chase run. Really not very present in the entirety of that battle. Yeah, it's unfortunately we're not going to have the replay for that first one here as we're still fighting the machine a little bit. However, we should be able to get that. Uh, yes, it still is uh, the finales of ESDA, apparently. <laughs> yeah, technical glitches happen. We do apologize, guys, but soon we're going to get that resolved and have the proper cars displayed for you on stream with their names. That was Let's try um, this. <laughs> yeah, Manji, that was Manji MSR's chase last time around. Opie Lou is now going to go ahead and Opie's like, actually... Maybe a rerun here. Could be a rerun. Something's going on. Boat drivers are going to go ahead and grab some tires. No, that is like, no, a exactly. uh, rerun to help us out a little bit as... Uh... Oh, yeah, that would probably help. I think tire wear might have been off, Ian. Ah, yep. And there we go. That's the rerun being called by the Ebb. And so it looks like we're getting off to a little bit of a rough start to kick it off. But hey, if you're going to have the problems arise, it might as well happen on both sides of the spectrum at the very start of the competition. And it's not happening in the middle. Again, guys, this is going to be your first battle of top 24 for GDS. Round there we go. How's that look? At uh, top list. There we go. As you can see on screen, Opiolu driving that Corvette C7 GR3 and Manji MSR and that Aston Martin V12 Vantage GT3 as well. So again, it's going to so be... So because of that, Ian, these guys should switch and it should be a rerun here. I believe this is going to be a rerun. Yes, it has been called. Both drivers are going to go ahead and then take the chance to warm up those tires back up in the warm-up section beautiful part about where this course lays in the track is they don't need to go very far from the pits either to roll out so it's gonna really uh, help the speed of this competition go along opiolu back in the lead manji msr in chase both drivers lined up and ready to go let's try it again so drivers getting the signal to go ahead and start rolling off the line that corvette in the lead aston martin in chase on the throttle with the initiation up in the lead oh, a little bit of an instance of well Lag there, Manji. Oh, he's getting really rough. Manji MSR, there we go. Gets back on it. Really nice angle this time around. Kind of running a little bit shallow through that next section of the course. Not quite getting swept out wide. Do apologize for the blips going on. Something maybe going on server size. The Corvette transitions big for the final corner. Asks to get super aggressive. Gets in on the door, pushing in. Oh boy, that was a much more lively chase for yes, Manji MSR. That is exactly what you we were expecting. Yeah, both these drivers working their way into the top 12 last time around. Uh, they are very high caliber drivers. They are showing just that on screen. Corvette kind of getting a little bit of a gap to start it off. Opiolu a little bit behind, kind of runs it shallow in the power alley section, sweeping back to the left, then loses out on the gap. All in all, that Corvette, though, very stylish up in the lead. Opiolu really getting aggressive on it and then flicks it big for that final corner, and that's where Manji starts getting super, super aggressive in chase. Gets in the door, makes a little bit of contact, but no harm, no fall. Both drivers continue on and finish out the course. Now both drivers being instructed to switch them around as they have lined it back up on the line here. Yep, so these two will swap out. It'll be Opiolu in the chase this time here. As uh, no, that's Now that's correct. Opiolu going to be to the driver's left here. Of course, a similar layout to what we saw at uh, Mugello with the chase driver being on the left and the lead driver being on the right as we wait. There's the signal from the tower. Nick Zabodin gonna give the signal. So here we go again. Uh, part two of the battle. Yep, second half of this battle. Interestingly enough, the first corner is a right-hander and the drivers start opposite of what typically is in there. So a little bit of a curveball to the drivers. Oh, this time Manji, really aggressive on that angle in the lead, transitions back for the sweeping left-hander, gets out to the zone, nicely pushing out wide. Gets to the outer zone beautifully as well. Flicks it for the final corner. Woo, a little bit wide going into that corner. Corvette's going to take advantage of that. Opiolu gets in on the door. Really aggressive. That Manji MSR exiting that final corner kind of parked as far as the speed goes. Puts the car where it needs to be for the most part of that run. And uh, with that, it's just going to be a moment here before we get the replay up and we can compare it. But that was uh, not quite as stylish in the uh, lead as I think Opiolu was kind of hoping for there, Ian. Yeah, definitely not really getting to the angle like that Corvette was for a couple of different sections, but for the most part, did pretty darn well getting to where he needed to be, as I mentioned before, against those clipping points. Really nice flicks as well. Oh, we, have a, uh, we have Either a we have a decision. And decision being made. Winner of the battle is Opiolu. Opiolu gets the win, and he will be advancing to your top 24. Next up, we have Yaya 187 versus Jalinder heading to the starting line. 
You can see both of them heading out now. I like the way we're doing this. It makes my life a little bit easier. Two cars at a time. <laughs> As uh, we'll get the opportunity to get those guys on the racetrack here and uh, on the ground. Yeah, remember, guys, um, that rumble strip on the right-hand side of the course after turn one is not the zone. You have that touch and go on the outside, that transition mid-track, and get to that inner clip before they push out. I'll go ahead and, and you know, once again, talk you through what the line is when we uh, we get underway here. This track, a lot longer than most drift layouts, um, so it can be a little bit confusing to stay on top of things. But uh, these drivers definitely keeping it to heart on these battles and they're making sure that they are uh, well prepared for this round these drivers at gds no slouches really know what they're doing out there so it's now we're gonna see uh, a little bit different of a uh, cars that we were uh oh that's because that's the wrong person that would be why that's not right yeah, if, if we are on battle number three this is jalinder versus yayo 187 And here we go then, both drivers working the way off the round, Ronan in the lead, Yayo and Chase. That new Camaro versus Viper battle, we're gonna see just what that Camaro brings to the table. Oh, big angle into the first corner. Runs over that rumble strip, maybe over angling just a little bit, pushes out nicely to that outer zone, turns it inside to the inner clip. Ooh, a little bit of contact being made, and Chase the Viper getting aggressive, that Camaro getting out to the outer zone beautifully through that final section of the course. Flicks it back to the right, pushing into the door is the Viper making up for his mistakes earlier in the round, really getting aggressive and into the tire tracks on the exit. That was a really lively back half of the course for the Chase driver. So we'll take a look at the replay now here, and yeah, like you said, a very lively infield here for that for that uh, Viper, and you can see the Camaro trying to get it sideways, and he, he doesn't quite have the transition there, Ian, that I think we were expecting, just not a lot of transfer and uh, not a lot of angle. He kind of stuck to that apex a little bit. Yeah, definitely being maybe a little more reserved on the line, but needless to say, he got to the zones where it needed from a couple of different places, albeit maybe just in a little bit more of an unorthodox way. Still a pretty solid lead all in all. Maybe a couple of mistakes in the middle of the run for Yayo, unfortunately. Ronan Cervoni looking pretty solid going into the second half of this battle. Yes, that's actually Jinder we're finding out. Uh, apparently, we skipped the second battle. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There we go. It's not Beamer either, but hey, we'll take it. Um, all right, so both drivers going to go ahead and then reset. So that was Jalinder's lead looking solid. We apologize for the graphics. Uh, the way he's got a couple of different uh, change to order of things that's kind of throwing us off. Oh, look at that stylish entry for the Viper in the lead. Yayo making turn number one his own, pushing out to that rumble strip, getting on it, transitioning back, really starting to show the gap over that Camaro throughout the entirety of the course. Really not in the picture as all is Jalinder. Jalinder, a top 12 driver for the last round. Could he be seeing himself out early as, wow, the gappening is happening. Off to the races is Yayo in the lead and that Viper and the Camaro not having a very strong showing in his first chase. Yeah, he just didn't have the speed at all. And I think, you know, opposite of what we saw at the end of the last one of these where it was uh, Madden Von Venom just destroying and driving away from everybody else and thrown on that angle. Uh, in this case, it was the Camaro just falling off the uh, falling off the back end of the Viper there. Yeah, just really was not there. He, he had the idea. He was close on the initiation, but... Man, the gap just pouring out through the entirety of the run, just slowly falling back further and further. And, you know, that wasn't the matter of, like, a, a lack of angle for that lead driver. You know, Yayo was on it in that Viper up in the lead. So, man, Jalinder just really not present in the chase, not able to keep up with the speed that is that Dodge Viper. Still waiting and on that decision, I believe. And decision going to, nope, not come in this time. Yep, still waiting. waiting on that result. Maybe the driver is talking about some inconsistencies with the lead. Maybe a couple of different uh, zone, air quote, infractions for the lead driver the last time by. Uh, for the most part, though, I think Yayo put down a pretty solid. Maybe talking about the initiation. If it was a double initiate, I don't think so. We have a decision. All right, decision has been made. Waiting for it to roll across your screen now. And that is going to be Yayo, 187, getting the win over Jalinder and he will be advancing to the next round of competition. What a drive. Yeah, great drive for him as we're working on getting our uh, second commentator in here, uh, Lizzie. 
working her way into the uh, stadium. A problem problem is security wasn't letting her in, and uh, <laughs> unfortunately, not really sure why. But you know, when you have the laptop, they they freak out about it a little bit, and that's what we had there. Ian. Nah, it happens. It happens. Soon we're gonna have Wizzy joining us here in the booth. Uh, next up on the dock is going to be Captain Wellsy. What Wessy? Captain Wesley versus the Pineapple Head. Dodge Viper versus Dodge Viper Battle. I don't know. I think these gamer tags are better than ESTA or PSN <laughs> IDs. I, 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 I think Keenan would probably uh, have some some opposing opinions on that one because you know he 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 has uh, opinions for Smarmy Binky of all people, which is a brilliant name by the way. Just just throwing that out there. You don't get pressured by him. <laughs> so, Cap Captain Wellsy, what Wes Wesley? What, let's see, I'm just going to say Captain. Captain in the lead, Pineapple Head in chase. Dodge Viper versus Dodge Viper battle for the third battle of top 24. Here we go then with the initiation for the Viper in the lead. Captain throws on the angle, getting really aggressive in chase. Pineapple center punching the door of the lead driver. This Viper versus Viper battle showing up in troves already. Getting a little more settled now. Looks like Captain is going to go ahead and bring it to the inside zones. Pineapple really not able to keep it in the tire tracks in chase, pushing out wide, losing out proximity as a result. But oh, big drops for the lead driver pushing fronts onto the zones and not getting out on the exit either. Mistakes for Captain in the lead. That's a rough, rough run. When uh, all things considered, the first half was looking pretty good for a Captain's favor, but now definitely a couple of deficits on the back half of the course. Would you say that was a uh, slam takedown by uh, I, Pineapple there? Yeah, I don't I don't think there was anything wrong with the lead by a captain. That was definitely a uh, burnout three takedown style of a uh, a door punch to the center, all things considered. So I don't think the fault is going to be given yeah. to captain in the lead. There it is. I like it. I like it. I don't think it's going to be given fault for the contact for the lead driver captain should be clean. But man, back half of the course, completely missing out on that touch and go zone number four uh, is definitely going to put some and points back there in is. the favor of the other driver. So now these guys working their way backing back to the staging area. So now we're going to be on board with uh, Captain Wilesey this time. Uh, Captain Wilesey and Chase then. Pineapple head in the lead. Second half of your third battle in 24. Just waiting wait on the for signal. the signal. Can't stop the signal, Cisco. <laughs> Can you stop the music, though? Ooh, good point, good point. All right, there we go. There is the signal. Both drivers have gotten off the line through our 40 mile an hour respect zone. Is now drivers on the throttle, working our way back into turn number one. Pineapple's lead gets in in the corner. Really beautiful angle through the corner. Oh, Captain, really not there in proximity on Chase, kind of straightening out and washing out wide. We're really starting to lose out now. Driver in the lead. Pineapple starting to pull away. Kind of runs it a little bit wide through that left-hander. Hits the zone okay, though, allowing Captain to close back in and chase. Regardless, though, the proximity and chase not there. And, and all things considered, I think Pineapple did a really good job getting to all the zones where it counted. Now it's really going to come down to where they uh, they see the faults in the first half. And are those mistakes in the league going to be enough to completely offset the mistake Pineapple had in the lead as I get a call in my ear from the irising server. Still awake. The leader is pitting now, Cisco. <laughs> so Do you still have it on in the background? <laughs> yes, I still have my server <laughs> on in the background. I'm still there. But uh, yeah, look at the replays on screen. Uh, really, really pushing wide. Pineapple Head was in that third inner zone. But remember, guys, actually on the map, that is not a zone. The third corner of the, the left-hander is not an inner. It's a touch-and-go zoo. Two on the outside mid-track and then touch and go three on the outside before the hairpin so i would imagine actually this might be leaning more towards pineapple head on the decision barring what they're going to call the uh the accident going into turn number one on the first half of this battle yeah it might force them to do a rerun because pineapple got so much of a lead in that second run but you can't ignore the uh the slide tackle in the first oh, run. oh no so no not I, at all. i'm not really sure where you go with this ian but either way i don't think it's going to be uh either driver really happy keep in mind both of these drivers they're driving Vipers. They're both part of Team Dynasty here, so teammates running against each other. I think they they may want another. They may want a uh, OMT as well. Yeah, it really does come down to what they're gonna scrutinize on that first run. I mean, all in all, the proximity was closer in chase for Pineapple, in contrast to what Captain was doing in their chase. But again, can't understate the mistake. And one decision has been made. Winner of the battle is going to be the Pineapple Head. The Pineapple Head will be advancing to your top 12 competition. <laughs> Just run that statement by me again, please. 
the pineapple head will be advancing to the next round of competition. Uh, <laughs> so that is going to be it for the third battle. Next up, we have Ladad working his way to the line. Ladad will be facing Antcar 113A. Both those drivers were really heavy containers in the final or the last round. I believe they were in the final four, both cars, if I'm not mistaken. Either that or at least... No, top six, rather. I think they were at least in the top six. So, I don't think this is no, a well, rematch. Yeah, I don't think this is a rematch, per se. I'm not terribly sure on the bracket side of things. I need to go back on the results of the last round. But both drivers, uh, really strong competitors. It's it's unfortunate to see them facing off here so early, especially in top 24 competition, where one of these guys are going to have to bow early. That could be uh, big points implications very early on in the season. Uh, this round, these, uh, these, uh, these, these, the season rather is much longer compared to most drift seasons. So you can't have one or two bad rounds, but you can't let them pile up throughout the entirety of the season. And one of these drivers are not going to be walking away happy from this round in their points situations. That'll be Ant Car leading and Ladad in chase. So we get set. There's the uh, command. They'll head off the line here and head towards the first corner, that first dinner zone. Yep, Ant Car. All the way to the right-hand side of the course. Going to go ahead and get on that style. Big flick into one. Really far backwards into the corner as well. That Camaro showing up in Tros on the angle side of the spectrum, needless to say. Ladad not letting him get away, though. That BMW in chase is very aggressive. Getting in and super, super close throughout the left-handed sweeper section of the course. Big angle for the lead driver, Camaro. Swing back to the right. Not falling away at all is Ladad in chase. This is a quality battle so far, guys. This is what you would expect for two drivers who were in the final couple of lobbies last round. What a battle to kick off the first half of round number four. And really, the only thing I think was lacking was from Ladad was a little bit of angle, and That's really my only complaint with that. He was on the door of Antcar that whole run. Didn't really lose a lot of proximity. So it really, it's only that angle in the first corner is my only problem with that. Yeah, no, I don't think Ladad was ready for the angle Antcar threw on there. It looks like the car was going to kind of settle in about a, oh, you know, 45, 50 degrees. But suddenly that Camaro really starts rotating well in the back half of turn number one, right through the center of the corner at almost 70, 80 degrees. Very stylish lead for Antcar. Now the question is, will this Camaro have the speed it takes to keep up with Ladad in chase this time around? Because remember, Ladad, no slouch. He knows how to get it done. He is a very, very fast driver. The style for Antcar cannot be understated. And I get the feeling that he'll be able to, to accommodate for what needs to be done in chase. They're both definitely both high caliber drivers here. Now these two drivers are going to line up. I think the parallels here between the power plant of the SLR McLaren and uh, the Camaro here are very similar. Keep in mind, both those cars have a lot of downforce. The Camaro because of the wing, the SLR because of mechanical downforce. I think that's one of the reasons why so many guys have gone to that. It does replicate a little bit with what we've seen with the SLR. Oh, absolutely. So here we go. Then second half of this battle, Ladad in the lead at Car and Chase. Lots of angle for that lead. Gets down to the inside beautifully. Camaro and Chase keeping it in, in the tire tracks as well. Transitioning across the bumpers. Work away now to the left hand section of the course. Really getting aggressive in Chase. Pushing it down the door. Pushing into the tire tracks. Maybe a little bit of contact here through the third corner. Transitioning for the fourth. Look at that flick for the lead. But Ant Car not letting Ladad get away. This is a quality battle we have on our hands, Cisco. I could see this definitely going either, either way, but really, I think my heart's leaning towards an OMT on this one. Really, really quality battle between two really quality drivers. Yeah, I, I hope we get a chance to go OMT. I think if there's anything to look at, it's like we mentioned, the lack of angle on that first uh, that first corner for Ladad and Chase. Apart from that, they were both basically uh, hit for hit in that case. You can see both stayed with each other the entire battle there. I, I'd like to see this go OMT as well. I think the only difference really between these drivers' leads was the angle differences. Again, that's what the car strengths are playing into. Trying to get away in the lead is Ladad in that BMW GR3. And obviously the angle of the Camaro seemed to be a little more prevalent. So really, it's going to come down to lead for lead. Do they consider one to be better and then chase for chase? Uh, how does that offset their leads? This is definitely going to be a close decision here. But again, guys, whichever one of these two drivers are going to be bowing out in 24. Oh, boy not giving a good points decision as a decision is in oh there it is one more time being called between ladad and ant car wouldn't expect anything else as i mentioned before these guys up there in the top six last round they're going again 
Yeah, and we wanted to see them go again because these two did a fantastic job, and that's exactly what we'll get. So uh, Germany versus the U.S. once again here with uh, the Beamer Z4 versus the Camaro. And uh, they because they made it back to pit road here, Ian, they do have tires. We aren't going to have the, uh, the tire thing happen again. <laughs> the infamous 95%. Never forget, rip to you, West Nirvana. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, driver is now working the way back to the line. Ant Car getting his second lease on that lead. This time, Ladad probably knows what to expect from the angle for Ant Car in the lead. So maybe this time we'll be a little more aggressive on his angle in chase. That's what I love about OMTs, giving both drivers the opportunities to offset the previous run, study each other up. Maybe make for an even more explosive second half of this battle. Ant Car in the lead, Ladad in chase. Top 24 action here in Troza. That initiation for Ant Car. There is the angle at the end. This time, Ladad not as president in chase. Going to go ahead and close in on that line a little bit to close the proximity. Maybe charging in a weird spot, though, losing out of the proximity for the second half of this course. Really playing catch-up throughout the entirety of the left-hander. Now gets into the door okay here for the final set of corners. Transitions across the bumper. Ant Car, lots of angle into the final corner. Ladad getting aggressive on the proximity in chase. That was a quality second half, but unfortunately, Ladad really losing out on the proximity for the first half of the run, charging in a weird spot, exiting turn number one. That unfortunately is going to cause a complete loss of proximity and big time catch up mode as you're going to see on replay. Yeah, so we'll watch the replay here and you'll see him just lose all that ground and that's that's going to put Ladad in a very bad spot coming into the second half. Yeah, you can see right there, the gap just opens, a yearning chasm between the two cars. Yeah, the um, the way you have to close in proximity and chase is you can't really get aggressive on the exit of a corner. So that's the point where the weak car is going to start rocketing off with the speed. If you're at a, a different line of momentum, getting in the door at a really weird place like that in the very exit of the corner, that's going to cause Ladad to have to check up. And that's where the gap is starting to be shown. He just got too aggressive in the wrong parts of the course, Cisco. And unfortunately, he's probably at a much bigger deficit this time around because of that chase. So now the UK driver of Ant Car going to go up and chase for the second time against the uh, Sweden uh, driver of Ladad. You can tell he's from Sweden. He's got a big giant flag on the rear of this car. <laughs> Makes it nice. Hey, that's some country pride. I, pr I appreciate that. I'm very happy to see that. As now, here we go. Both drivers, second half of this OMT battle. Well, that's an angle for the lead this time. The Camaro in chase staying present. Doesn't charge in a weird spot. That's going to allow the proximity to stay close as they both work their way across the left-hander. Ladad in the lead, putting on the angle. Camaro staying safe in chase, getting aggressive where it counts. Flicks across the bumper, has to hit the brakes, not to run over the BMW in the lead, but still here through and through throughout the entirety of the back half of the course and the first half as well. A much better battle this time around for Ankar. Unfortunately, we could be seeing Ladad working his way out of competition super, super early. He was your second place finisher last round. He's coming in second at points with 180 points. This could not be a good point save for Ladad. Yeah, I was going to say, this is, uh, I didn't think we'd be seeing that, and, uh, wow, such a uh, change here, but also just the difference in the circuit, you know, maybe not playing necessarily to the Z4 strengths as, uh, Lada doing circles around Antcar, and yep, the, uh, decision going to come in, sure enough, it's going to be Antcar moving on. Yep, Antcar given the win, and actually, I was incorrect, Antcar only made it to top 12 and saw himself out early, he was going up against Manji Car. We were playing on that play on words for that OMT battle. I remember that one. So Ant Car sees himself lower on the point spectrum going into this one with only 80. Now sees himself working his way back into the top 12. At least 80 points on the table for Ant Car. That is a good points day through and through. And unfortunately for Ladad, he's got to hope that Madame Van Vettem does not have a good points day because uh, that could really start opening up a gap super early in the season. So this will be Zoo Ransom. Versus Anti the Great. BMW versus Dodge Viper from Team Ronin and Team Liberty, respectively. And another one of these Viper GT3s, another one of the uh, preferred cars of the drifters out here. Is it? Is it probably that V10 power, I would guess, Ian, that's really helpful in this car? Some, something about that car is definitely helping the power get down. It might be the location of the engine in this regard. It might just be... Uh, you know, just something about how the, the wheelbase of that car works with drift. I'm not terribly sure, but definitely being one of the more preferred chassis, even the Group 4 and uh, 
and street version of the car also being pretty prevalent as well in a bunch of different instances. So there we go then for this battle, Zoo Ransom in the lead, Anti the Great in chase. Oh, a little bit wide for that BMW in turn number one is going to allow Anti the Great close back in that proximity. Runs it a little bit wide, however, for the left hand transition. Not quite there in the door, given the opportunity to close it in as he runs really, really shallow on the inside. Unfortunately, not matching the line for Zoo Ransom. This is a very sloppy battle in lead and chase. Zoo Ransom. Definitely uh, getting a little bit cleaner for the second half of the course, but Anti the Great just not taking advantage with the door wide open. Can't really quite get in on the proximity and falling offline as well is going to see his second half of the chase absolutely go up in smoke, as you're going to be seeing on the replay here. And just once again, just no, it seemed like a either driver, I think Zoo was able to find it a little bit more, but just both drivers couldn't really find a rhythm. I don't think the uh, server's helping out as much there, but. You can see Zoo, he's able to go to the outside and then flip back over. Ante just didn't seem very comfortable in that entire battle, Ian. No, not whatsoever. Zoo Ransom, your fifth play finisher in the last round. Uh, sitting on 110 points going into these battles. So he's looking for another good point today as well. Yeah, what's going on? The, uh, the record is now 40 minutes. It took 40 minutes for the bottom ticker to break. Mm -hmm. Hey, I, I, at least... Uh, we got it for a little while. We'll get that reset here in just a couple of short moments, guys. Again, this is uh, really pushing our streaming capacity to the limit. We're trying to bring you the absolute best of the best. We really do hope you are enjoying what you're seeing so far. If you are enjoying that, please do hit that follow button. Podium Esports, no stranger to the motorsports side of things for broadcast. Whether you like fly racing, whether you like drift, Podium Esports is going to be the home for you. Do hit that follow button if you like what you are seeing. Switching around now, Anti the Great in the lead. Zoo Ransom in chase. Oh, gets a little bit shallow on the angle and the weeper corrects it nicely. Gets down to the inside section of the course. Ooh, a little bit of an over-rotation on the exit of turn one for Anti the Great. is going to allow that BMW in chase to keep it in on the proximity. Zoo Ransom having a much better time. But oh, gets really aggressive in an awkward position. Makes contact through the outer zone three and transitions back for the inner side zone. But other than that little hiccup for Zoo Ransom in chase, all in all, a little better of a job for him in the lead and chase aspect of this battle. Yeah, I think this is very much going to lean towards Zoo Ransom, and uh, he's just seemed a little bit more comfortable. Just to me, it didn't see like... It seemed like Ante just didn't have the... Uh, the the comfort factor in the, in the in in on this racetrack. I don't know if it's the car or what it is, but just never really looked in real control to me. And, yeah, but in the second half of this battle will be underway soon as we are finally joined by Lizzie. Being able to get through security, they're <laughs> being really aggressive and not letting her get through with the laptop. It's unfortunate, but hey, you know, it's security. It happens. We welcome you to the booth, Lizzie. So we're now working our way onto the next battle as Zoo Ransom will be given the win. Zoo Ransom moving on to the top 12. And Lizzie, welcome to your first dabble into the Gran Turismo sports side of drifting. Uh, thanks. I mean, <laughs> I've been rushing to try and get here as fast as possible, um, <laughs> and my laptop is giving me troubles, but uh, hopefully I don't stall out too much. Um, you know how Windows 10 is, it can be pretty clunky sometimes, but um, from what I've been seeing, we're, we're seeing like a lot of very, very good drifting, a lot of uh, door banging, a lot of just, just a lot of dr drifting, and I'm Really pleased to say that I at least made it here and can start actually commentating. <laughs> yeah, you may want to take a look at that laptop CPU load because unfortunately you're roboting just a little bit, but that's okay. We'll get the, the technical difficulties sorted out. Uh, this has been so far not as much of a, uh, a a smooth broadcast, at least from our end as well as the, uh, the even, even on the driver's end, you know, the, having a couple of difficulties. But hey, you know what? It's early. We're just barely working our way through 24. Push comes to shove. We're going to bring you our absolute best of the best as now Ghost Recon 002 versus Mr. Overload 98 will be the next battle. And once again, Cisco, there's another Viper up in that lead position. Yet another Viper. Yet another Viper. <laughs> Just Viper. As a little bit of confusion on who's starting where, I believe what we have on screen is correct. Overload. Yes, there we go. Now they're going to line each other up here unless Ghost Recon playing a little bit of mind games. I love it. Hey, you gotta be tactical, Ghost Recon. 002. The tactical boy. <laughs> Dodge Viper in the lead. Lexus in chase. Here we go then. Mr. Ovalo versus Ghost Recon 002. Working our way quickly through your top 24 bracket. A gap being shown going into one. 
Closing in nicely in chase is Mr. Overload. Ghost Recon getting out to the zone nicely. Transitions across and all over the curbs in that lead position. Beautiful driving, however, for that lead driver. Lots of style in the Viper this time around. Transitions beautifully for that fourth corner as well. Getting all over that inside zone. That was a pretty solid chase all in all as well, but maybe not as close as you would like to see in a uh, this echelon of drifting, leaving some potential points on the table for Ghost Recon in their chase. Yeah, we'll watch the replay here and uh, not quite the proximity that we wanted to see there, Ian. We've seen a couple guys get closer, so I think it was a very safe run for uh, Overlord there. And uh, like you said, I think Recon did leave a little bit left on the table there. And really, that last hairpin has been very interesting to watch drivers try and navigate because of how quick of a transition it has to be from touch and go coming out of the previous corner and then you have to flick the car back across. That's right. probably one of the quickest transitions I've seen in competition this mm -hmm. Oh, and also bear in mind, Ghost Recon getting that left rear tire onto the dirt as well in outer zone four. So unfortunate that that might be a deduction for the lead up. All in all, I think Ghost Recon's lead was pretty darn good. We have to see what they can do in the chase position. What would that be, Ian, if there was a tire on the grass? A tire swap. A uh, deduction? De de deduction, yes. So both drivers still working their way down to the starting line, as you can see on screen now. Switching around, Mr. Overload in the lead. Ghost Recon 002 in the chase position. And there is a signal. Both drivers off the line. Let's see if Ghost Recon will take advantage of the fact that the proximity and chase was not quite there. The Viper very sorted in the lead. What does Ghost Recon have in that chase position? Kind of losing out on that initiation. Mr. Overload starting to pull away a little bit, but no, not so fast. The Viper pushing in aggressively in the left-hander. Gets another door. Oh, heavy contact being made. That's going to push the lead driver out wide. Ghost Recon, I don't know if that was an instance of server lag or Mr. Overload got off of the gas, but oh boy, that is a very, very contentious point. Really, we've got to see, was that being a little bit too aggressive in the lead? Was there a brake touch for the lead driver? Replays are going to be quite telling of what just happened here. We're going to definitely need to take close attention to that bottom right side of the screen. And we saw a little bit of a hitch there beforehand, but I didn't see necessarily one that time. That to me just looked like Recon got on the power and uh, Overload did not. And uh, Bam said the lady, I guess as Nathan Fillion would say, and off he goes. <laughs> Yeah, I didn't see Mr. Overload getting on the brakes, getting off throttle. It just kind of seemed like Ghost Recon may have just shot themselves in the foot and charged aggressively in a very awkward position. I'm really going to have to come down to the replay to see just exactly what they're going to be calling here. But yeah, heavy contact being made in that left-handed corner. And that is going to be giving Mr. Overload the win. Mr. Overload is going to be giving the win. Unfortunately, big mistake for the chase. And that is going to be seeing Mr. Overload advancing to the next round of competition. That's got to feel really, really bad for Ghost Raycon when the battle was kind of leaning in their favor. But one mistake is all it takes here in Drift. Yeah, absolutely. And as we finally got a uh, hoot through security and uh, we knocked all the <laughs> bugs out of our mic and we should be good to go now. There we go. Hopefully, we're fine now. Um, so, like I was saying, um, I've been watching on the on the production feed here, and like the racing has been fantastic. That was a pretty great battle. I that uh, I just barely missed. I watched the tail end of it, but mm -hmm. um, all right. Hopefully, we got all the kinks worked out. Yeah, it's sounding much better this time around. Hoop, thank you so much for joining us here for round number two at Atopolis. Glad to have you here as our other commentary partner. Keenan is actually in the very race that I was just in. Unfortunately, uh, I have to step out and he gets to, to go on. I'm not salty at all, Keenan. <laughs> but he's having a, a pretty good race. <laughs> I mean, he beat you to the scheduling. Yeah, that, 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 that is fair. That is fair. So next up, we're going to have GMDS GR3 versus Sim18. So I think we're waiting on Sim to actually head to the racetrack right now. So uh, if you are watching, get in the car, man. <laughs> Just waiting to see what is going to be happening. As I believe we may have an incorrect card listed for you. I don't know if this is uh, GMDS Cisco or if this is uh, yeah, Sim. Yeah, it's a Viper. It's a Viper, yeah. ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Who, who, who are we on right now? Uh, we are on, uh, oh, it's going to be a re full rejoin here, so give us a sec. Ah, uh, okay, okay, one of the drivers not able to get in, so just waiting on what is going to be happening here. 
Is that a server reset or what's going on here? Uh, I believe both these drivers are going to leave and come back. So uh, we should be good here. But uh, that was not my fault. That was, uh, I was given the wrong car. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, 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 so uh, yeah, so potentially some, some connections issues for both of these drivers or one of them at least. Both drivers are going to go ahead and back out and rejoin. So we have this there little bit of in the action. Uh, we have worked our way through almost about two thirds of our top 24 bracket so far. Uh, Yayo, that went over Jwinder. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily call that an upset based on the quality of drive, but it's definitely not what Jwinder was looking for, as we mentioned before earlier. Uh, that's one of the contentious points so far. Unfortunately, uh, not a good point stay for the second half of this battle is now. We're going to have a different set of drivers here, Ian. Uh, here we go. Second set of drivers rolling out now. Going to wait to see who exactly is working the way in. Now, it's kind of work. It's not necessarily in order, guys. We're just kind of working through top 24 based on who is ready and who isn't. Uh, really lenient there when it go. comes down to uh, who is going to be running. This is going to be VDC Thugantho versus Will R. S. Hoot. Oh, man. Like, uh, I love these cars so much. Like, th this this game looks so pretty. <laughs> yeah. Delivery on the Mustang looks great. The Dodge Viper looks great. I'm so glad to be watching this kind of thing. Um, so, uh hopefully we get to see some fantastic action from the two of them uh really excited to see what they got yeah it's kind of funny with the meta of cars here when you're looking at the mustang now i believe this is the first mustang we have seen so far in another echelons of drift it's usually oh yet another mustang but <laughs> seems to be over here at gds yet another viper here we go with a different variation of the viper in the lead this time though not the gr3 spec as the initiation for Thugantho in the lead is beautiful. Lots of angle and consistent as well. The Mustang and Chase will RS keeping it to the door and bumper of that lead driver in Thugantho. Pushing out wide now, getting out to that outside zone. Gets onto the rubble beautifully. Very solid lead and a big flick into the final corner. Will RS getting aggressive in Chase as well. Pushing in on the door. Quality battle so far here in top 24 between this Viper and Mustang. Liz, what a battle. That was fantastic. That is exactly what I would expect to uh, see from uh, a GT Sport drifting com competition. I would, I would have maybe hoped to see the chase driver uh, try and match the angle a little bit more. You see a bobble there uh, as well. But uh, overall, just fantastic driving from the both of these drivers. Yeah, today drivers have been plagued with really losing out on proximity for a lot of the battles. And the fact that Will yeah, may have had a couple of different bobbles in the line and a couple of cuts here and there are still keeping themselves in the picture of the battle. And that's very important to keep the contention points alive as we go ahead and switch around to the second half of this battle. This is going to be Thugantho and Chase this time with Will RS in the lead. So far, really liking what I'm seeing from these drivers. Definitely one of the faster runs I've seen so far today and keeping the angle and style on as well. Really fun to watch. Yeah, that is one thing I noticed with uh, GDS is that with the uh, with a spec that they run here on GT Sport, it seems a bit slower. But I don't mind that; it's easier to commentate. Yeah, it definitely gives you some time to think about what is happening on the line. And oh, look at the angle for Will RS in that lead position. Viper trying to close it in. Unfortunately, that angle loss is on the speed. Doesn't quite get out to the touch and go on the outside. But oh, oh. look at the angle again. Throwing on lots of style in the lead, but a couple of inconsistencies on that angle. Unfortunately, could be a plague to what Will RS's lead is doing. I'm loving the style, but really it's kind of messing up the Viper in chase. Judges are going to have to take a look at that lead. Oh, two big drops for Will RS on the exit of the final corner as well. I loved what Will was trying to do there, but may have just overdone it. Kind of played themselves a little bit. Replays on your screen now. Really love the style, but yeah, you can see, unfortunately, not really allowing Will to get out to that outer touch and go. Transitions for inside clip number one, and look at the, or inside clip two, rather. Lots of angle, but unfortunately, that really loses out on the speed. A little bit of an angle check, you could almost call it. You can see Fagantha really kind of pulling in and out in different sections, and yeah, a big drop as well in the final corner for Will RS. Liz liked what we're seeing, but unfortunately, from a point standpoint, this may not be going in Will's favor. You're absolutely right, I think. Like, I... I can't help but agree with you, and it's unfortunate too because Will, his run, his lead run was amazing. Like that was fantastic angle. He kept it in there, uh, but yeah, I think that those tire drops is going to be a really, really critical mistake. For
Yeah, if Will could have held that angle on the left-hander as well with all of the uh, the, the speed going through, touch and go two, working to three, uh, that, that could have been really good. But unfortunately, I think maybe that little bit of an over-angling, you can see the car have to then grip up and straighten to work the way to touch and go three. It's really, really unfortunate through and through because Will definitely, with the most style I have seen so far today, but the inconsistencies in angle might end up shooting himself in the foot. Side by side on these replays, though, that Viper in the lead having a pretty solid lead, but in the chase, way more aggressive is the Mustang. So maybe a couple more points to talk about, really depending on how they're going to look at those tire drops. Still talking about these decisions pretty heavily as uh, lots to talk about here between run number one and run number two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and like looking back, as as you said, as, as we look at these runs side by side, I noticed like a... Uh, uh, Thug in the Chase uh, had um, a, a tiny, tiny bit of a bobble. Uh, might be, maybe, maybe a slight straighten is what I w might have seen there. But um, in his lead, he was there. Like the style wasn't there. It certainly wasn't a whole lot of angle like Will was putting in there. But it was a pretty solid run. Like I'm pretty sure it looked like he got to all his points. Mm-hmm. Yeah, decisions still not being made. They have a lot to talk about here. I, I really, really do like seeing angle and speed. Again, Gran Turismo Sport with Drift is not necessarily uh, a speed game. The grip much lower compared to other games. So that really allows these drivers, as we've seen with uh, Madden and Ven Venom last round and a couple of different guys running these styles of chassis, they can get super, super aggressive on angle. And uh, the style just coming in troves for both drivers on their leads, more specifically with Will. So, uh, yeah, Josh is still talking this one through, is he? This is uh, definitely not as clear cut as maybe I had thought it was. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I, I just, um, I, I would really like to know how this turns out if they're giving this so much thought. Because, I mean, like, in my personal opinion, which ultimately doesn't really matter to the judge... <laughs> Uh, it, like, it, it's just, um, like, if you go two tires off, then, like, that's, that's kind of, from my experience, that's it, you're done, your run's over. But, um, you know, his run, like, with his style and his flair was so hardcore <laughs> when compared <laughs> to the, uh, uh, the other driver. It's just, yeah, like. I don't know. Like, I really want Will to win this, but I don't know. I think it's all about what those tire drops are going to mean to the judges. Yeah, remember, judging criteria different from series to series. Two tire drops in some other series would mean a complete zero and a loss of a scorable run. Some means, yeah, that's just a deduction. Some other series want three tires off counting as a zero. So really, the differences in the judging uh, are going to show. And actually, yeah, they're going to go ahead and then give the decision right there. VDC Thugantho is going to be given the win over that Mustang in a very hard-fought battle over Will RS. Yeah, that's really unfortunate to see because uh, Will had a fantastic run, but yeah, that just that little mistake right at the end of the run seemed to have been the thing that tipped the judges over, but a uh, fantastic run either way from both those drivers. Yeah, I gotta believe that Will could have cleaned up the line, definitely could have had a lot more to show for in this round. One thing to look out for in the continuing rounds, however, Will RS probably going to be back, probably going to run some more. Really curious to see just how well they do in the future here for GDS in round number three. Working our way through the next battle in top 24, DMS, DMDS GR3, and the Dodge Viper will be leading or, or chasing weather. I'm not too sure, apparently. There we go. Sim versus GMDS GR3. Corvette versus Dodge Viper battle. And hey, he had another Viper. <laughs> Oh, I love so, the Vipers so much. <laughs> so, so, something about this car has to be incredibly, incredibly meta, though. Like, it's definitely coming to, to serve well. And uh, unfortunately, it looks like Sim might not be here again. Is this a Byron, Cisco? Okay. So, unfortunately, Sim having some issues here, so it would seem. We have to wait and see what they want to do uh yeah waiting to see what they're gonna do up there in the officiating booth uh sim very very strong driver he was actually your third place finisher last round as well 
So issues being made is oh, as we might it might be same as invisible for our production feed. We may actually may need to join. We're gonna step away for just a quick second. We're gonna go ahead and try to fix this problem, guys. We'll be right back here on Podium Esports. back to our continuing coverage of round number two here at the top of speedway for grant not well it's not grant just a sport but this is the gaming drift series round number three or season number three rather here at autopolis uh still looking uh for sim i don't know if we can see him still we might be having some difficulties in no it looks like actually sim is then back on our screams we are set and ready to go a small technical glitch uh falling upon us but there you can see on screen right now sim is visible to us we're waiting on him to pull up to the line here then and we can continue our round of 24 action at Autopolis. So, um, so, uh, Ian, you've seen, uh, the other drivers run so far. I've been trying to poke into the stream while trying to get through security. Um, <laughs> but like, uh, what do you think about all the drifting you've been seeing so far? Uh, so far, there has been maybe one upset or maybe one unexpected result that I've seen thus far. But all in all, I mean, it's it's to be expected to these drivers. You know, it's round of 24. There's been a couple of really close battles uh, on, on the screen as of recently. Uh, looks like we're not going to be able to continue with that battle. So with that, we're going to move on to uh, last week's winner, or last round's winner, rather. Man and Ven Venom is going up against AAO Abra. Uh, I don't think we have any more than three or four battles left of top 24 we're working our way through this quickly now trying to get into 12 6 and then your finals but yeah this is man and ben venom in his mercedes-benz slr mclaren against aao abra in another chevrolet camaro zl1 actually that does not look to be the case looks to be a gr4 spec of i believe that's a lexus yeah lexus rcf then for AAO Abra in the shape position for the first half of the battle. Now, Man and Ven Venom was doing things to the course that lots of drivers could not, as far as like the angle goes. Uh, very, very stylish driver in the lead. However, this course 
a lot more of a, a sweeping style of a track, not as many tight corners here. So maybe one section of the corners where they can really throw on the beans and put on that 90 degrees of angle. But uh, this time around, I think Madden Venom's got to kind of nerf himself a little bit in that lead position because uh, too much angle. Oh, okay, there we go. So this is Lewis... Lewis, Lewis Scriven? Lewis, Lewis Scriven 2004 in that Lexus RCF from Team Wild Monkeys Drift versus Team 66. Team 666's Madden Van Venom. Continuing top 24 action with the initiation. Oh, why do I even say the driver's not going to throw on the angle? Oh, but 90 degrees and still pushes out nicely to that outer zone. Absolutely putting on the style, making the course their own. Madden Van Venom. Not getting away though, that RCF in chase from Lewis is here. Oh, big flick into the final corner. Kind of gets the Lexus all crossed up, losing out on proximity at the end of the run, but Mad and Van Venom with the style up in the lead, the most angle I have seen and made it work up there in a lead so far today. Goodness me, Madden. That, it, like, there is a reason he's won the last round. Like, uh, I did pop in for a little bit of that stream just to get a, a, as much of a taste as I could before I had to leave uh, in the last event. And what I saw from Madden Van Venom was fantastic. Nothing short of fantastic, for sure. And this is no exception. We're seeing a lot of very good driving from a lot of these drivers, but Madden so far has been very impressive. Uh... Hopefully uh, he can, uh, you know, uh, do the same kind of fantastic driving through the chase because, uh, you know, the, it's, he's just at a, a massive advantage right now. Yeah, give credit where credit is due for Lewis, though. In chase, not really falling out of the picture. Yeah, sure, maybe not matching the angle in a couple of different portions of the course but as far as as far as proximity goes uh definitely keeping it in tight and close to madden van venom throughout the run so keeping themselves in the picture that's very important a lot can happen here in a drift run those 20 seconds have all kinds of variabilities and you can see a upset happen in the snap of a finger lewis on that initiation not as much angle but gets down to the inside zone beautifully oh madden van venom touching the brake you can see that little pop-up wing every single time they get on the brakes super aggressive in Whoa. chase pushes it up the door that SLR McLaren is here and oh, oh that's an angle for Lewis and the lead transitions back I thought for sure that car was going around but he recovers it somehow Madden Van Vanham in chase still there in the picture and all oh, over rotation for Lewis on exits and a straighten that may be an incomplete lead for Lewis depending on how they view where he straightened out Lots of angle in the lead in a couple of different portions as well for Lewis, but not able to keep the momentum going. And that car stepping up very awkwardly in a couple of key places, of course. Yeah, that was uh, just yet another fantastic run. You know, uh, the drivers in the GDS, they are doing amazing jobs. We saw a little bit of an over angle there from Lewis in run two there uh, up in the lead. And uh, that might be, an, as you said, like an incomplete uh, run there. But like fantastic driving from both of these people like it's, <laughs> it's so good yeah it's very very fun to watch these drivers absolutely go at it here with these tires again speeds are a little bit lower but these drivers can put on the style as a result and goodness me these 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 drivers are absolutely getting it right now on a top list this round is delivering so far needless to say and yeah lewis may have shut down just a little prior to that finish line unfortunately and the decision has come in then. Madden Van Venom will be advancing to your top 12. And that will see Lewis out in top 24 action. But nothing to shake a stick at. That was a pretty solid run. Totally agreed. Nothing nothing much to add here. You know, uh, Madden just, like, did what he did last round. You know, he, he, he threw down. He came to put on a good show. And that's exactly what he did. But uh, let's also not uh, forget the other driver, too. He did a fantastic job. Uh threw in huge amounts of angle it's just unfortunate about those uh over angles there yeah, it looks like we have about four or five battles give or take left to go here in top 24 next up on your screen you see easy essington versus aao maddie lexus rcf gt3 versus mercedes benz amg gt3 i said this might be a, a different spec this is not the gt3 version i believe this is just the regular amg street version yeah that's just, that's just the street version and another RCF Lexus. We'll be working the way through the competition here. 
seems like the, the 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 Lexus and the Viper seem to be pretty prevalent cars when it comes down to uh, drift competition. So it's really going to be interesting to see how these chassis are going to stack up later on in the competition, depending on if uh, Easy Hasington can obviously work their way past AAO Matty. Uh, yeah, like. And another thing too is that uh, these cars also look really bad, uh, really good. Sorry, so it's not <laughs> like you know we're looking at like the meta, and it's also a ugly bad. No, oh, look at the angle for the lead driver, but has to straighten it out. When it might be the server bubble, I can't quite tell. Regardless, that is a really fluid lead so far. Lots of angle in that left hander, pushing it out nicely to that outer touch and go, working their way through the next left. It's a touch and go beautifully. Look at that angle and style for Essington oh. in the lead position. AMG and Chase staying close. Maddie not letting the driver get away, but really solid line, barring maybe what happened in turn one for Easy Essington. Quality, quality drive for both drivers. Yep, yeah, totally agree. Uh, it's I, I would have liked to see the Chase driver. I would have liked to see uh, a little bit more matching of that angle, a little bit more uh, proximity, but... Um, well, proximity is okay. Like it's yeah, about really, it was just on one. par with what we've seen. But I just like to see a little bit more angle in the chase. Uh, fantastic flick there. Fantastic angle getting into that corner, uh, and got right out to where they wanted to. Maybe, possibly a tire drop is one I tire drop. I think I may oh, have seen one tire get off into the dirt. I'm not terribly sure. I need to go back on the section video. Uh, but ooh, really getting everything of the outer there, exiting turn number one, getting super close to dropping a tire there as well. And depending on what the judges say, I wouldn't necessarily call the loss of proximity a fault to Maddie, depending on if Essington actually did throw on the angle straight in center of the corner and it go back to angle. So judges are going to have to talk about that one for sure when they get into the uh, the overall judging at the end of this battle. Switching around then, Maddie will be getting the lead. Essington will be getting the chase. AMG versus Lexus off of the 40 roll and back into turn number one for the second half of this battle oh big flick for the lead driver on that initiation a little bit wide from the curb however that's gonna allow usington to get aggressive Ooh. on the proximity and chase tire drop for the lead driver exiting turn number one flicks it back for the left hander gets out the touch and go to beautifully look at the angle for that lead driver and its consistency as well getting into those touch and goes where they need to like to small boop into the back bumper going into the third and fourth corner Goodness, that was a very, very close transition across the bumper, making the contact even credit to Maddie in that lead. The angle was super smooth and consistent. That is exactly what the judges are going to be looking for in a scored run. Just take a look on that replay. Yeah, misses out, unfortunately, on getting down to the inside for turn number one. But that angle and how smooth they were pouring it on was way more consistent, at least in my opinion, versus Ellington's lead as well. Just no bobbles, no major corrections throughout the lead, and, you know, a small little push into the third corner as well, but not getting phased by it at all. Really, really solid lead. Essington keeping it in the picture as well in chase. This battle may be pretty close. Yep, it's it, it, it's a really close one, yeah. Um, unfortunately, like, I, I would have liked... Uh, I, I, I still think I would have liked a little bit more in the... Uh, uh, Maddie's chase, but that lead was Ooh. fantastic. Decision has been made. AAO Maddie is given the win. AAO Maddie will be advancing to your top 12, getting the win over that Lexus RCF. <laughs> it's funny, too, because I was just about to talk about his lead run, which I think impressed me a lot more than Essington's. Mm -hmm. Like, lead for lead, chase to chase. Um, no question about it. But uh, other driver did a fantastic job as well in that Lexus. Fantastic looking yeah. one. Yeah, Essington, I think the only thing that really ended up causing their downfall was that over angle and then correction in one. Uh, I could definitely see that battle potentially going OMT if that was cleaned up. But unfortunately, uh, I believe the fault is going to be given. <laughs> so there we go. A A O O Manny. Uh, versus, I, I don't know how I'm going to pronounce that name on stream. I do apologize here. Uh, representing Team 666, uh, I'm just going to I'm just gonna hold my tongue on that one. Regardless, Team 666 representatives in the Dodge Viper versus Omani in the lead Dodge Viper versus Dodge Viper, yet another Viper. We could probably just, we, we could probably just go with... I'm going to call them Wiz. How about we call them Wiz? Or Wiz, yeah, that, that, like that's Wiz. a bit better. I, I like Wiz. So Wiz in chase, Omani in the lead position. Viper versus Viper battle. Yet another one. Here we go. Off the one. Oh, look. 
adds that flick into turn number one. Lots of angle and style in the lead. Transitions back across for that inner and outer zones. Goodness gracious, there is some really good style in O'Mani in that lead position. Wiz is keeping in the picture. Oh, over rotates and Chase corrects it. I thought for sure that Viper was going around. All in all, keeping it in the picture, but oh, Manny with the style up in the lead. That's probably the closest style I've ever seen to contend with what Man and Van Venom has brought to the table so far today. Quality battle. Hello, oh, Manny? Angle? That was fantastic. I, 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 I thought for sure. I, I thought for sure that car was going around, and it just didn't. Or was it? Oh, it was so, wasn't it? Oops, I'm... <laughs> Yeah, so uh, in any case, like yeah. uh, that was fantastic. Oh my god, great uh, control from the driver there. And so he was getting super, super close to overangling on the final corner, and the way they were able to do that without pushing those front tires into the grass was impressive. I thought for sure that car was going to go around. So he does a great job recovering that angle on the exit of the corner. Doesn't even really lose out on proximity either. So. Solid job correcting what could have been an absolute disaster of a chase. We're going to go ahead and switch them around. So he's going to get their chance at the lead. And Omani is going to be giving their chance at the chase. Not a whole lot of battles left in top 24 actions. We're moving along nicely, continuing this Viper on Viper battle. Man, I, I, I keep saying it, but I'm going to say it again. The Vipers, they all look fantastic. Like, <laughs> this, these are classic cars. So it's, yeah, it's good to see them going sideways like they should be. Yeah, it's definitely fun to see the variation in cars that we're used to typically seeing in other forms of drift. But here's that initiation for Zoe up in the lead. Oh, losing out on proximity, unfortunately, is Omani not quite ready for the sauce that was poured on in that lead position. But points it big in Chase. Oh, my goodness me, that is a lot of style in Chase. Zoe up in the lead, hitting the marks where they need to be. Lots of angle for the Viper as well. Transitions for the final corner, gets down to the zone nicely. That was actually a really, really solid lead as well. Unfortunately for Omani, kind of dropping out of the picture in turn number one may be the downfall here of this judging decision because other than other than that mistake i really didn't see much variation between both of these drivers as far as uh the, the comparison of their runs yeah that, that was another fantastic run I, I i gotta say i'm still super impressed that so managed to recover uh his car as well as he did um but lead for lead, chase for chase. Uh, ooh, I don't know who I'd be going for. Who do you think? Who do you think would be going for uh, this? I think lead for lead, it's pretty darn close. So he's doing a lot of really good things in their lead as well, and unfortunately because of uh, the way Omani was kind of uh, attacking in a couple different places of the course, moving the camera around, we couldn't really see the angle matching and uh you know what what exactly it looks like in contrast but all in all the leads are almost comparable and that's why i'm thinking here uh it may be a difference in what they're going to call in the chase but i could also see this going omt depending on if they're going to say that uh, omani's lead was just a little bit better but I, I honestly think their leads are pretty much mirrored it might come down to what the chases are and oh no nope, there is the decision right there for you on screen one more time being called i do like that call i want to see them go again i want to see them clean up a little bit judge is going to be awarding the parts where both drivers are in contention of each other uh it was very very much mirrored in a couple of different places very much uh, uh a difference in in opposite corners of the the, the runs both leads and chase so both of them are going to get another opportunity at cleaning it up and taking a more definitive answer on who of these two are the better. Yep, and then, uh, the two of them have decided to take some, uh, get some new tires, try it again, and uh, reset. Uh, we saw a couple of mistakes in their in in their runs, so hopefully they can uh, clean those up and we can get a couple of fantastic runs and really make the judges work for their decision again. But uh, you know, I. I, I like. I'm. I'm just really impressed with uh, these drivers so far. Fantastic driving from, from So and Omani. Uh, obviously, the both of them have fantastic control over their cars, and I. I just can't wait to see what this is going to be like if they clean up their, teeny tiny little mistakes there. Yeah, the mistakes weren't really that big either for either of the two. Honestly, I'd really do like seeing what they have brought to the table in this battle thus far. Uh, Omani. 
maybe gonna try to be a little more saucy with that initiation as I say that. <laughs> they do just that. Look at that style up in the lead. That was one heck of initiation all across the bumper on that transition. Is Zoe way closer in proximity through the long sweeping left? Is the driver in chase? But still, that angle in the lead cannot be understated. Those flicks oh. are so beautiful way to see the drivers absolutely getting all that it's worth pushing out wide though yeah getting tires in the grass and lead is omani but wow just the, the 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 discipline and control for both these drivers being able to make their cars flick as hard as they are and getting them to stop on a dime exactly where they want them to be pointed is beautiful to see that is not an easy thing to do here in gran turismo sport both these drivers showing they are the masters of their craft in their respective vehicles Absolutely, you know, in uh, and it, it in this um, what do you call it? In this uh, uh, the word for like like restrictions, like the with the with terms of like tuning and whatnot. No, oh, I get, I get uh, what you're saying. Yeah, well, anyway, in the, in like the tuning regulations, you know, uh, with the way this uh, series is set up, it really amplifies an emphasis on control and discipline. Um, especially with the with these tires that they're using here, and it just seems like, you know, Omani and and so they just they know what they're doing. They're super comfortable in their cars. I can't wait to see what this run does. So he's gonna get another chance as the hot boys in the chase are gonna get their opportunity at that chase and oh nice angle for Zoe and their lead as well proximity not quite there as far as the picture goes oh a slight over angle for Wiz on the exit of turn number one is going to make a really weird Ooh. separation big charge for Omani making contact into the wheel well Zoe transitioning big for that final corner getting back in on the picture is Omani this is gonna come down to another judging decision I think Liz is both drivers not done with it yet <laughs> Omani getting aggressive uh. on the proximity to exit the run this is what we sign up to watch at the gaming drift series on podium esports Liz that's exactly what I wanted to see. They cleaned up their act. They got the tiny, tiny, tiny little mistakes kinked out, and it's just fantastic driving from the both of them. The judges have a long road ahead of them to try and figure out who's going to win. Like, just fantastic driving. The huge charge from Omani there, getting a huge shove into the doors. Oh, man. Fantastic driving. Honestly? Good job, you guys. Uh, honestly, I'm going to be rude with you here. I think this might be going OMT again. The reason being, I think Zoe overangled a little bit on the exit of turn one in their lead, causing that drop in proximity. Omani, you know, holding a consistent speed, but really has to get on the brakes. I don't think the loss of proximity is their fault. But then on that charge back to the lead driver making the contact and kind of offsetting the mistake takes i think on that second run with how clean the first one was i could very easily see us going again barring what that tire drop for omani means in the grand picture of things on the exit of the final corner and their lead this is a really really good battle i like seeing drivers absolutely going after it in just a very controlled manner and and almost answering each other's calls on the style for the lead as well uh you see Zoe there doing that big flick into one to answer what omani did in their lead uh gosh it's, they're, they're going after it they really really want it and uh, as you mentioned, um, Omani's tire drop on the exit of the final corner, you know, that could be a, a pretty vital aspect that the judges are going to pick on um, because the lead and chase, uh, the, with, uh, with So's lead and Omani's chase, it was fantastic, great proximity, uh, fantastic style from the both of them, but that tire drop, mm, it's, it's, I don't know. It, it's kind of... It's going to throw a wrench in things, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if it wasn't for that tire drop, these runs were basically even in a lot of different aspects. Um, barring... It, depending, again, on, on what they're going to call the fault of the loss of proximity in the second half of this battle, run number two, uh, judges definitely are probably going to be taking their time talking about that one, making sure the correct decision is being made, because either way, both these drivers, whoever falls here, that's a strong driver working their way out early. These drivers have shown they have the caliber of drive it takes to work the way to the finals of this round. I personally believe this is a really, really good battle on our hands here, Liz, and um, I'm just very curious what this decision is going to come down to. Uh, really, it's going to come down to those minuscule things, I think, but again, there is a world where I see this going one more time. Yeah, it, it would be really nice to see another one more time because, like, these guys could... I could watch these guys go for 24 hours a day. 
uh, f- just fantastic control and uh, and throttle discipline uh, from the both of them. It's it's really unfortunate to see uh, just those two mistakes uh, from the both of them there. Uh, it seems we've got a call here, and it's going over to So. That's kind of a wow. Yeah, So we give him the win here. I may, maybe that tire drop could have played the factor. Maybe it wasn't seen that the over angle on the exit of one is not going to be the the deficit there. But regardless, very close battle all the way through and through through battle number one and that OMT. I really really like seeing that kind of fire in the drives for both of these guys and uh. Yeah, that's going to be so advancing to your top 12 action. Not many battles left here. We got Manji Death Clock versus Ronan Cervoni. And then I believe after that, we have Sim versus G3R. And after that, I believe that is going to be it for our top 24. So only two more battles remaining here. Is <laughs> getting a little bit saucy with the style working the way Mackie. to the line. I like seeing that for the Subi. <laughs> oh, that is a fantastic is, looking mission, car, mission. too. I am, oh, boy. Yeah, but it's, hold on, let me let me take a look. Yeah, that is not that's yeah. not a that's not, that is sacrilege. If you, if you look, I I am seeing a blue <laughs> circle here. I do not think that is a Mitsubishi, ladies and gentlemen. I was like, hey, my eyes don't deceive me. I know the body styles are similar, but but guys, guys. So here we go. That oh is Imani versus Ronan Cervoni in Chase Subaru versus AMG Battle. Really beautifully painted Subaru and Chase. Really beautifully painted AMG in the lead. Oh, gets a little deep, however, unfortunately. That's a big mistake on that initiation for Death Clock. Kind of straight through the center of the corner and pours on the angle late to not go completely off. That's going to be a big mistake going into the remainder of this battle. Ronan getting aggressive on the back half of the course now. Getting in on the door. Not quite there. Get in on the door exactly, but you know, not a whole lot of angle for the lead either. Manji Death Clock kind of getting a little bit sloppy on their lead. Yeah, uh, just a couple of mistakes there uh, from the both of them. Uh, you know, um, from the Mitsubishi in the chase. Yes. Uh, <laughs> from... <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, Nah, but uh, uh, to be quite serious, though, um, you know, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more sauce. But then again, you know, we just finished watching an all-out battle, oh, like yeah. a battle you would expect to see in the finals. So, uh, you know, hard to kind of adjust yourself to like the um, to some of the other competitors. We see the the Mercedes kind of like sliding out just a little bit, and maybe a huge straighten from. Uh, Cervoni in the chase there. That might be a big problem. He might be at a deficit here. Yep. Second half of the battle, then Death Clock going to get their chance at the chase. Cervoni in the lead. Can they have to see if Cervoni can clean up turn one? Not make the same mistake that Death Clock made in their lead. Both drivers doing some, some interesting stuff right now. What's going on? Okay, they're going to get the call to go. Both drivers going to take a little bit of an awkward line off of the uh, the starting line, but it's okay. They get it all straightened out and squared away for the second half of this battle. Oh, Death Clock really not there in the picture for this initiation. Really shallow on the angle as well. Cervoni, not a whole lot of angle for the lead either, but still end of the day the proximity and chase is just not there death clock needs to do something on the second half of this course to close in back in on the door cervoni and doing just that as we close it out oh lots of angle into the final corner for cervoni hitting the line where they need to be that amg just really not in the picture for the first half of the battle but kind of gets there at the end of it but all in all just uh not, not quite there for his entirety yes yeah, a little boot there at the end hoot <laughs> oh another one too <laughs> uh, another one um but yeah uh it's uh this run was a little bit uh a little bit cleaner from the the, the pair of them uh it seems like on run two death clock might have been just a little late to initiate in the chase there um i would have liked to see a little bit more angle as well but uh death clock doing a decent job after that uh late initiation to match uh the angle up in front um, this is going to be an interesting one to judge. I'd like to see what uh, what the judges really pick apart on and focus on to see who gets the win here. Yeah, it kind of seems to me that Death Clock had the same problem in the chase as they did the lead. They throw on the angle for the initiation. The car just doesn't want to step. It goes in shallow. Uh, makes a mistake of over-angling it to fix the problem and they're leading this time in chase. They kept it kind of shallow and unfortunately that pushes them out wide not being able to match the tire tracks of Cervoni. Closes in nicely for the second half of the run, but yeah, it's just kind of like the, the tail of 
of, of, of two halves in the same section of the course. Just a shallow angle going in, causing a, a real loss of line in both lead and chase. Rona not necessarily getting away in the lead when Manji missed out on the line and won for the chase the second run. But re regardless, you know, just that the angle not exactly where Death Clock wanted it to be. And unfortunately, uh, really kind of causing some issues in the first half of both lead and chase for Manji Death Clock. Rona Cervoni putting the car where it needs to be. Maybe not necessarily as much angle in it, but regardless, that is going to be the decision made for Ronan Cervoni to be advancing to the top 12. That is going to be Manji Death Clock seeing their way out of this competition in top 24. One more battle left here in top 24. This is going to be looking on the sheet now. This is going to be Sim 18 versus DMDS G3R. If Sim is able to pull forward to the end of the line, having a couple of technical difficulties, this battle has been plagued throughout the entirety of the event so far. <laughs> I think we've tried this two or three times now. Let's see if this time uh, we can get them out in a course. Uh, Cisco, are we having the same issue here? Oh, Sim not on the course again. I don't know if this is a technical glitch in. Oh, no, they're not even in the server period, actually. Only GM. DS G3R is here in the server. Sim is just straight up not here. Maybe just waiting for Sim to try to reconnect once again. Uh, but unfortunately for Sim, a really strong competitor last round, seeing some difficulties here in this round of competition. And we may need to have a small reset. So here is the bracket on your screen then, guys. Uh, you've been seeing the entirety of top 24. Then working on one more battle here in 24. Again, this is Sim 18. Going to be trying to take down GMDS G3R as your final battle of top 24. So um, we've been seeing a lot of fantastic driving from all of these drivers. We've seen uh, a lot of very impressive showings. Uh, do you have... Any predictions based on the last round that you commentated on uh, to see who's going to be coming out on top? Uh, I, I do believe Van and, Madden Van Venom is obviously going to be a strong competitor. He's definitely doing things with the course consistently and smooth, unlike a lot of the guys that we are seeing so far today. But honestly, I think right now, based on everything that I'm seeing right now, Zoo Ransom is up there to take it to them. Um, okay, now we are seeing both drivers on the line. Now, finally, the issue has been fixed. Zoo Ransom looking pretty good so far. Uh, Thugantho looking pretty solid as well. Honestly, I think this could be a, a lot closer of a competition for Madden Van Venom this time around. And needless to say, between those two drivers of um, of Soe and uh, Omani as well, being very consistent and really stylish with what they're doing as well, I think stylistically, we might have a couple of different drivers in this tournament that can match up with Madden Van Venom this time around. It could be a little bit closer. Yeah, uh, yeah, you're totally right. Like, um, like Madden is definitely like a statistical favorite in uh, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, but hopefully, we see uh, some other fantastic. Oh, what happened oh, here? Sim not, Sim not getting the memo. It's time to go. May have stepped away. Oh, we might be having that technical difficulty uh -oh. once again. The the lead driver not showing up on screen. Uh, he was kind of parked there on the line. Maybe G3R is seeing the lead. I'm not terribly sure what's going on. There's definitely some kind of a, a, a technical difficulty with the server connection to us and Sim. Not terribly sure what is happening here. We might need to do a complete lobby restart at this point. Not terribly sure. But yeah, Sim definitely not showing up on the broadcast side. Can I just ask a question? Who unleashed the gremlins? Well, it's because I'm, I have something to do. That's the whole reason why this is taking extra long. You do realize that, right? It can't be a smooth and consistent run. It, 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 we need to have all of these hiccups. We need to have it all happening. Because if it wasn't happening, then, you know, I couldn't get back behind the wheel for the, the drive, obviously. <laughs> so, yeah, this, this round may be a little bumpier than last time. We were definitely already on top 12 competition by the time uh, 5 o'clock Eastern rolled around. And uh, this time, you know, unfortunately, because of this this one technical difficulty, we have just not been able to work through this battle. We've been trying it over and over. Uh, all right. Well, it looks like 
we're gonna go ahead and then step aside looks like the judges are seeing what's happening they're gonna go ahead and be able to call it as it is for them they're gonna do this battle off screen because uh yeah this has been a little bit of a technical difficulty so we're gonna take this time then to go ahead and step aside reset and when we come back you'll get the winner of this battle and your top 12 action don't you go anywhere podium esports continuing coverage of round number two of the gaming drift series anatopolis will return in just a couple of short moments
And welcome back to Podium Esports, continuing coverage of round number two for the Gaming Drift series here at Autopolis. We finally have a decision between that battle between Sim and uh, G. I, I completely just lost my my bracket, so I, I completely G three R G M D S G three R. They went double O M T double OMT. So we, we, we missed out on quite the banger because of a technical difficulty. We apologize. We could not bring that to you. But G3R after two OMTs is given the win and taking down a really, really good competitor in Sim. He was your third place finisher last round. Really wish I could have seen that battle to judge how he's going to then stack up to the remainder of this uh, this tournament. But hey, you know, we're going to all find out at the exact same time. Again, guys, my name is Ian Plash. Uh, Lizzie over here with me. And Cisco Scaramuza down in the production with him. Sorry, I got, I got a little bit of a distraction behind me going on there. We really, really greatly appreciate you guys joining us for our continued coverage of this round. Uh, we just got done with top 24. We are now to top 12. The best is yet to come, Lizzie. Like, uh, what we've seen so far has blown the doors off of any expectations I might have had. Um, the the little glimpses I had of the GDS when I was here earlier, fantastic running. It was a f uh, fantastic showing. You know, Madden definitely showing up to play uh, because he won uh, last round. But, um, you know, we've been seeing run after run of drivers with a fantastic amount of uh, control and throttle discipline it's just a fantastic series here. Yeah, so you can see on your screen the remaining bracket for this round. Opio Lou versus GMDS G3R with the first battle. Uh, Mr. Overload 98 versus Zoo Ransom. We got Madden Van Venom versus Thugantho. Maddie versus The Pineapple Head. Uh, Yayo versus Antcar. And uh, Soe versus... Ronan Cervoni. So that is going to be the 12 drivers who have then worked their way into the bottom half of this tournament. Up in the top 12. Now, first battle on screen of top 12. It's Opio Lu in the lead versus GMDS G3R Corvette C7 versus Dodge Viber SRT10 Coupe. And this is going to be one way to see just the kind of strength that G3R brought into that battle to take down Sim. Again, your third place finisher for round number one. Here we go for the initiation for the first top 12 battle. Opio Lu getting on it with the Ooh. angle, really straightening out in chase. Unfortunately, maybe he had the wrong gear for the G3R, not able to put on the angle, but really gets aggressive in the proximity Ooh. for this part of the run. The second half of the run looking much better, but oh my goodness, Opio Lu is disgusting on that angle up in that lead position. 
that is the closest thing I have seen to Madden Ven Venom style and angle. May have even taken it to a whole new level. That was a beautiful drive for Opio Lu in that lead position. No slouch whatsoever here for the first half of your first battle in top 12. One word for that lead right there. Angle. Just, <laughs> uh, like, just, just, like, just, it, it just, like, I, I, I figured, you know what? Okay, that's, okay, that's an, okay, that's enough, that's enough. And he just keeps going uh -huh. and going and going. Like, I, I think we've only seen this match by, like, um, by Madden Van Venom with the amount of style and the amount of control shown that they were getting to all the places they need to get to and still pouring on the angle. Fantastic showing. And the chase was no slouch either. No, not at all. Remember, guys, Opio Lu was your fourth place finisher in the last round. This driver knows how to put it on. He does just that versus the guy who just took down the person who finished third in the last round. We are getting stacked here for the remainder of this competition. Top 12 and on is going to be fire. Needless to say, the drivers are going to switch around. G G3R given his chance at the lead. Opio Lu in chase. This Viper versus Corvette battle will continue as the initiation then for G3R. Lots of angle, a couple of weird bobbles here and there. I think we're having some more server difficulties on the connection. That is probably not what the drivers are seeing. We have to work our way through that now as that Viper really not getting to the angle like the Corvette was doing in their lead. Opio Lu doing a good job matching the tire tracks, matching the angle. Not necessarily there in proximity, Whoa. but maybe playing it a little bit safe. Maybe there are some problems with the connection for both these drivers. Oh, tire Ooh. drops for G3R as well in the lead. Could be sealing the fate of him, unfortunately. Just really not matching the angle throughout the entirety of his lead. And then, yeah, that tire drop at the end, really tough to, uh, to give him a, a fighting chance to advance out of this round, I'd like to think. Yes, this is definitely going to be like a... Uh, I think the judges are really going to be focusing on chase for chase because uh, from what we've seen here, lead for lead, um, Opio Lu definitely has the advantage. And as far as I can see, uh, we did have a couple server hiccups there. Um, but from what I can see, uh, Opio Lu did uh, their best to try and match the angle. Um, and G3R's chase, uh, they also did their best, but couldn't quite get the rear end to step out, especially on that really wonky looking uh, initiation there. Couldn't really be sure if that's also a server hiccup or if it's just uh just a really late initiation but um you know the judges are gonna have a pretty hard time just determining how big an impact that uh, those tire drops have yeah uh, in some cases it kind of looks similar for g3r where that car has quite a bit of grip in the rear end and really when that car kind of grips up it's tough to get that car to transition back around you saw him kind of slowly transition from right to left after turn number one uh, you saw the car potentially straightening out in its chase as well, and then taking a while to get back to angle. Don't know how much of that is server-related, how much of that is car-related, but uh, there is definitely some some cases where you might think there might be a little too much rear-end grip for G3R in that Viper, not allowing that car to rotate. Uh, still waiting on that judging decision. I think they're going to be talking through what exactly is what as far as a connection problem, what what is just uh, the, the driver actually straightening out. You know, we got to sort through these problems and work our way on, because, yeah, guys, this is top 12. Not a whole lot of battles left to go. Literally uh, 12 battles, or 11 battles, rather, remaining here for this competition. they got to make sure these decisions are done correctly, promptly, and swiftly uh, to work their way through the remainder of this competition. Still working on that decision. Yeah, uh, I, I would kind of like to know what they're trying to determine. It might, it might have been that they've seen some server hiccups on their end, too. Um, uh, but, like... Uh, you know, I think lead for lead, chase for chase, I I don't know, just uh, Opio Lu definitely poured on a lot of that style, had a lot of angle, um, but of course, on the on the chase, G3R in run one had uh, had that proximity, he was like right there um, so, you know I, I, I think it's uh, if nothing else, is going to come down to those tire drops and uh, uh, determining whether that is going to be like a, the deciding factor for these two uh, judged runs here. Yeah, as we mentioned before, still waiting on that decision. Judges are you know, to here and try to decipher what is what really comes down to, I think, was... Opio Lu going to be, uh, yeah, actually, no, there's the decision right there. Opio Lu will be advancing to the next round of competition. Opio Lu advancing to your top six. And yeah, 
potentially the Viper and Chase for G3R, just not quite the angle in that uh, that turn one. Really almost completely straightens out as well, and maybe just they wanted to make sure they can make the correct call and saying that, oh, he was not drifting. And uh, yeah, that would be then a shutdown and Chase potentially for G3R, giving Opiolu the win. He will be advancing into your next round of competition. Next up, we do have... Uh, yeah, it looks like we, we have Zoe and Cervoni. This is going to be Ronan Cervoni versus Zoe in the next battle of top 12. Again, guys, uh, if you are following along with the bracket that was posted in Discord, we are just kind of getting to the battles where they are available. So this is not necessarily going to be in order. So do pay mind to uh, what is happening on track. Therefore, you competitors and spectators out there, make sure you guys are ready when your battle is called. Both drivers are working their way onto the grid now, working their way to that starting line. Zoe, lots of angle and style for that Viper in the previous battle, absolutely taking down, taking down a, a monumental battle between Omani, almost going OMT2, you would like to think. Really came down to just a couple of small things. Ronan Cervoni not there necessarily to match in the style department, at least with the angle. For what we saw the last time around, we'll get to see if there was maybe something else up in that trick book for Cervoni. Maybe they were holding back what exactly that chassis can do. But Zoe, you got to believe, is going to be getting on it with this lead up in the chase. Look at the flick again. Back into one, throwing in the oh. angle for that Viper in the lead. Getting down to the rumble cleanly, staying on that angle consistently as well, doing exactly what you want a lead driver to do. Maybe making a small cut on that inside clip, but recovers nicely back into angle, pouring on that consistency as well. Subaru in chase. Transitions across the bumper, pushing into oh. the rear of the lead driver, nearly into the final corner. Small correction for Sui as he worked his way through that section of the course it crosses the line definitely they're in proximity for the second half of the run but again Cervoni I just don't know what what, what the deal is with the tune maybe it's not so much an angle car as much as it is a speed car but really not matching the angle and in, in many different places of the course so we're making uh, almost the entirety of the course thrown again on that angle getting really really aggressive that is a very very good lead barring maybe one small drop here and there good job on the charge late into the run it was Cervoni but really just not quite there in the picture for the first half of that run. Might be a big detriment going into the second half of this battle, Liz. Uh, couldn't agree more. You know, um, Zoe had a fantastic initiation, maintained fantastic angle throughout, just as we saw in their last, uh, uh, in their last runs. Um, and I, I think... Uh, you know, Ronan has to work up uh, a bit of a deficit. Yeah, this is going to be the second half of this battle. Then Ronan's going to have to try to find something in the back of the pocket. I'm sure there might be something there. They're in the top 12 for the reason. Here they go with that angle into one. Really getting aggressive with it all the way out to the curbs as well. Maybe trying to grip up, start running away from Zoe up there in that chase position. Up in the lead. Cervoni gets out to the zones. He's definitely starting to lose out on that chase driver. Pulling away. Trying to make sure that this is not even going to be a talking point for the second half of this battle as really showing the gap. Zoe not there. He just can't get that Viper to grip up and keep up with Cervoni. Cervoni taking off for the second half of the battle. This is going to make things quite interesting if uh, if distance like we're, we're going to try we're going to have to see how the judges determine uh, distance to be uh, a fact like how much of a factor it'll yeah, really just it, it depends on what they are seeing here based on the angles and styles. Lead for the lead. I still think uh so we had the better lead as far as like angle and style goes, maybe a little bit more consistently as well with that angle. But all in all, Cervoni, it's a different style of lead, but regardless, still does a great job with that angle, great job getting to the zones where they need to be. Yes, there is less angle, but at the end of the day, you know, they're 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 playing to the strengths of that chassis. They're trying to run away from that chase driver in the Viper trying to make sure that there is no talking point on that that the gap being shown it really did look like Cervoni playing to the strengths of the car pulling away from the second half of the run as you can see on the bottom right hand side of the screen that Viper not even in the picture maybe that lack of angle for Cervoni in his chase was simply because that car was just so gripped up he had to really hold it back not to run over the Viper in the lead we're seeing two different styles of cars two different tunes and two different ways to drive them matching up against each other it is definitely uh, it's definitely something that it, so many drivers can take advantage of. You see these things happening all over the place in the drift world. Uh, take, for example, Forsberg versus uh, Chelsea Denofa in, in Formula Drift, how how they stack up differently, how, how let's say, um, 
you have some of the guys over in uh, D1 as well running different styles of chassis, lower horsepower versus high horsepower, low grip versus high grip. It's just a way you, you can get, uh, tackle these events and, and, and change up how it is you're going to run these events. So really cool to see that taking form here in top 12. Two drivers getting to top 12 for different reasons, but still throwing down what they are expected to do, what they want their cars to do, and, and, and executing on it. You can't talk any more importantly about execution when it comes down to, to playing the strategy that you want to play. Really like seeing both these drivers doing just that. And the judges taking all the things into account seeing which driver did what better and and do we have a definitive winner or if we're going one more time and yes there it is one more time called i do like that call you can see stylistically they they were at a mismatch but they still executed in ways caused gaps in, in ways that are not the fault of each other and you know they're gonna let these drivers go again one more time both drivers gonna need to go into the second half of the battle with the same mentality and, and trying to perform and execute once again really like seeing this here in top 12 for round number two So working on getting Liz back in the booth, having some, some more technical difficulties. That computer not serving well, unfortunately. We're going to go ahead and try to get her microphone situation figured out as Liz has then rejoined the booth. Hopefully then got that, that situation figured out. We'll have a commentary partner. I don't have to ramble on on a, a monologue for, for five minutes straight. How are we doing over there, Liz? <laughs> <laughs> uh, is it better now? We're dude? Much okay, better. We're much good. better. Okay. Uh, man, I think I need to upgrade my equipment, buddy. <laughs> It's, it's getting there. It's, it's coming down to it. I'm sure your, your CPU graph was absolutely spiking there. Here we go, Ben. Oh. OMT battle being called. So we in the lead doing it again oh. for the Viper. Ronin wants to match it, but catches that rumble. Maybe he has a little bit of an over angle episode coming through the center of one and two. Still there on the proximity, though. That Subi gripped up. And you're seeing just that. The angle for the Viper is beautiful. Not as much angle for the Subaru in chase, but keeping the proximity in the door of the Viper in the lead. Sui really throwing it down where they need to through the sections of the course. Another tire drop in the lead. But all in all, almost a mirror of what happened last time, barring the mistake for Cervoni in chase and one that could be a detriment going into the second half of this battle. You will see it on the replay. Ronan Cervoni may be catching a little bit of that Rumble strip and it awkwardly throws the car around. Either that or just maybe he tries to, to match the Viper and that car just cannot do it, Liz. Yeah, it seemed like they definitely got the rear end to kick out uh, to try and match Suey's uh, initiation there, but uh, couldn't quite keep it out there. It seemed like the uh, rear end really gripped up a bit harder than uh, Ronan Cervoni probably uh, expected, um, but definitely tried to throw it out there. And uh, Suey, as we've seen already, has been just doing phenomenal with that. Uh, control there aside from that tire drop so we'll see who's at the advantage here coming into the lead in the chase uh coming into the switch positions here yeah it's really once again going to come down to which one of these two drivers can execute on the strategy they want to play this time i think so he needs to make sure they are there in proximity maybe they need to do a little bit less angle and chase try to keep up with that super root it has been fast all tournament long can they keep up oh the angle is huge Ooh, for savoni no! and that is an absolute kill for the chase so we might have gotten too aggressive that is a decel zone remember it is up to the chase driver to not impede the lead it's really going to come down to that judging decision. Unfortunately, I, it could be the case of maybe an over angle for Cervoni and they checked up in a weird section of the course. It's a very tough call. We're going to have to look at the replay and try to decipher what exactly happened. There is that decel zone. The question is, did the contact happen beyond? Oh, yep. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and then call it right away. So he is going to be falling out in top 12. Ronan Cervoni getting absolutely bowled over in turn one. They're going to be given the win. They will be advancing then to your top six. We're going to go ahead and take a quick look at the replay just so you can see it for yourselves. Pay attention on the bottom right-hand side of the screen. Yeah, it looks like the Viper is getting a little too aggressive. Wanted the door, maybe thinking the, the, the lead was going to be faster. But Ronan's showing, hey, this car could do some angle stuff too, you know, and not really prepared for it was the Viper in chase. Runs into the... And that is going to be so. Seeing their way out in top 12 action. Ronan Cervoni advancing to top six. It's really unfortunate to uh, see our battles end like this. You know, you, you want to see them going up against each other, uh, tit for tat. You want to see people just battling instead of it being left up to these sort of decisions where you're taking it out of the judges' hands. But uh, so we did a fantastic job uh, driving up until that point. It's unfortunate that they ran over Ronan Cervoni, but uh, Ronan really impressed me there uh, compared to his previous runs. So uh, hopefully we might see him surprise us a little bit yet. Yep. And now uh, speaking of 
more surprises. It shouldn't have come to the surprises of any of you. That was an awful segue, and I apologize. That both of these drivers are then working their way into top 12. Mr. Overload 98 versus Zoo Ransom. Very good drivers, respectively, in previous rounds for Zoo Ransom, at least from what I saw. Mr. Overload looking very strong in 24 as well. Both of these drivers running GR3 spec cars. Very evenly matched. I would like to think with this initiation for Zoo Ransom, making a little bit of a gap shown, but no, hold a charge for Mr. Whoa. Overload. Checks up nicely, does not bowl into the back of that BMW GR3 in the lead. Lots of angle for Zoo Ransom up in the front as well. That car has the angle, that car has the grip, that car has the speed, but Mr. Overload does not care. Keeping it in the picture, charging aggressively <laughs> for the final corner as well. Right into the tire tracks, trying to get in for the final remaining portion of this course. All over the back Ooh. of Zoo Ransom. That was a quality chase and a quality lead here for your third battle of top 12, Liz. Oh, that was such a good battle there. That was fantastic. Um, might have to check the replay. I think I saw Zoo Ransom in the lead there drop a tire. It might have not been the case. It looked like it was to me. But the proximity definitely was there in the chase. Uh, the angle was there in both the chase and the lead. You know, the lead making some good angle and the chase definitely matching up. And the proximity was there. Just fantastic running from these two. I don't... Other than that possible tire drop, I don't think anybody really has a big advantage going into switching positions. And I really do like the way Mr. Overload was able to transition across the bumper, working into that final right-hander, and just slot right in on the door. It was so clean, transitioned perfectly mm. right across the bumper, and then on the door to lockstep, maybe losing out a little bit in the proximity in the center of the corner, but still, the idea was perfect, the execution was glorious. And now both these drivers are going to get their chances on the opposite ends of the runs. Mr. Overload in the lead now with Zoo Ransom in chase, continuing this fantastic Group 3 battle in Top 12. Off the line then, Mr. Overload going to need to do something special in the lead. Zoo Ransom got to keep it close. And in the picture, slight hesitation on the initiation for Mr. Overload, but still gets down to the zones where they need to be. Not quite as deep out into the rumble strip as Zoo was in their lead. Zoo keeping it in the tire tracks. There with the proximity, starts to charge then for the left-hander transitioning to the final Ooh. corner. Falls back a little bit, however, the proximity not quite the same as what uh, Mr. Overload was able to do in their chase, but still all in all, this battle delivering left, right, and center with Mr. Overload finishing out strong. Zoo Ransom getting aggressive in chase as well, matching the tire tracks. This is the kind of stuff you expect to see in top 12 action as we go into the replays. Take a look at both battles, how they line up almost evenly Got to talk about that maybe small mistake for Mr. Overload in the turn one with the overaggressive charge and then fall back. But other than that, I, I do think Zoo Ransom solid in a bunch of places in the chase, not necessarily there in the door, but they kept the gap consistent, Liz. Yeah, and as we come into run two in the bottom right hand of your screen there, uh, checking out the lead. It, yeah, they, uh, I was worried they might have dropped a tire as well. Uh, but no, they kept it clean. Like, fantastic running from both of these drivers, though. They they definitely demonstrated some fantastic troll behind, uh, uh, control behind these cars. Uh, Zoo Ransom and Mr. Overload 98, fantastic, fantastic driving there. Um, we're going to have to see how the judges weight uh, some of the uh, mistakes that were made. Um, perhaps the proximity could have been uh, a bit cleaner. Uh, a bit closer, rather. Um, perhaps there could have been a little bit more angle. Uh, lead for lead, chase for chase. I'm going to say it's a pretty close call here. Yeah, Zoo Ransom kind of took a little bit of a wide line on their lead as well. You'll kind of notice the initiation getting a little bit deep, slowing down in the center corner as a result. On the replay on the top left, kind of cycles back around. Mr. Olvo taking the shell line in and then aggressing. Uh, that's going to be a contention point, I like to think, in this battle. But if that is decided, then that's kind of like the gentleman's agreement. It's a side-by-side -side call. Uh, yeah, as I was about to say, OMT could easily be called, and that's going to be just that. One more time between these two drivers. Uh, definitely, uh, yeah. I, I, was, I was wanting to lean towards that, but uh, yeah, there is that. Real quick, I want to remind you all, uh, if I could find where I have been sent all this stuff. Uh, actually, Liz, go ahead. Take, take this away from me real quick, Liz. Yeah, sure. Um, you know, like, uh, the last uh, run, uh, two runs that we saw were just fantastic uh, through and through, and I couldn't agree with the judges uh, more here. Uh, these two drivers are uh, very, very uh, on their game, I guess. <laughs> um, a fantastic lead and chase from the both of them, and uh, as we head into this uh, next run here, we're going to see uh, Zoo Ransom in the lead, Overload in the chase... 
getting out of the uh, 40 roll over here. And here we are going into the first turn. We've got Zoo Ransom doing a fantastic job getting some angle out there, getting out to the outer zone. Overload is not far behind. Ooh. Closing and charging in! A little bit of a blip there, but we still got some fantastic action here. Trying to close oh, the gap. Wide, 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 Ooh, wide. Overweight, overload, or sorry, Zoo Ransom is definitely out to lunch on the exit or uh, through the final turn there. So up until that point, fantastic exhibition of skill from both these drivers. Uh, but unfortunately, due to that mistake in the final turn, Zoo Ransom might be at a bit of a disadvantage. Yeah, I want to go ahead and take this opportunity to remind you guys that this broadcast is brought to you by AV Sport. AV Sport is an esports racing platform as a website and phone app that is launching within the next couple of months. AV Sport will be the new home where GDS will be found, and each driver will have his profile with all of their stats and info. It's a fantastic tool for anyone out there who wants to, to manage a league and, and manage a drift series such as this. You can also check out all the results and points while live. It's going to be absolutely monumental what this is going to bring. Please check out their website at www.avsport.net. Again, guys, that is www.avsport.net. We got some really cool, innovative stuff coming to the world of esports uh, stat tracking. That's a good thing that not a whole lot of different series have. It's going to be fun to be seeing those things working their way into our world. And for you guys at home, again, guys, avsport.net. Second half of this battle, Mr. Overload in the lead. This time, Zoo Ransom and Chase way more aggressive Ooh. on the proximity going into one, almost making contact, backs off nicely, transitions across the bumper, getting way more prevalent and way more uh, present in their chase. Rather, is Zoo Ransom keeping it way closer to Mr. Overload. Launch <laughs> angle in the lead, Ooh. almost over angles it. You almost see that car going around, recovers it, keeps continuing on through that final right-handers. Zoo ran some way better chase this time around. And Mr. Overload this time solidly other than potentially maybe an awkward slowdown in that outer clip before the right-hander. You can see that on the replays coming up. But there are definitely things that are offsetting in this battle. Both drivers are going to be doing donuts around each other and celebrating. They know they just threw down. That was a very fun battle to watch. Was... I could not agree more. That was a fantastic run. Uh, a pair of runs from the both of them. Uh, Zoo Ransom threw down a fantastic lead uh, and threw down a fantastic chase as well. We're going to have to see. I, I can't tell whose fault it is for that contact in uh, run two there at the bottom right hand of the screen. We're going to have to see as it comes around again. Uh, but like, uh, like I was saying, you know, uh, with uh, Zoo Ransom's lead, he went wide in that final turn. Uh, that could be putting him at a de deficit. But uh, run two, depending on who's at fault for that contact, you know, this could be pretty close. Yeah, I do definitely see a rule. This may be going OMT. A couple of things do offset each other, but do also bear in mind uh, the, uh, the, 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 the nature in which Zoo Ransom ran that final corner a little bit wide. It really didn't see Mr. Overlord make a, a mistake. As far as the line goes, maybe has a little bit of a consistency problem with speed on outer zone or touch and go number three. Uh, kind of over angles, has to back off the throttle. And yep, there we go again. One more time. <laughs> All between these two drivers, OMT2 between Zoo Ransom. Yes. More. Like, I, I could not ask. Like, well, I can't ask for more. I want more from these two. These two are fantastic drivers, and they are just fighting tooth and nail to uh, advance in this competition. It's like, these two drivers are... We're, I think we're going to see these guys, uh, whoever wins, we're going to see them go pretty far. Like, there's a lot of... Uh, maybe some minor consistency uh, issues, but it seems like they're just evenly matched. We're in for a fantastic battle here. Yeah, they're going to go ahead and line them up once again. Zoo Ransom in the lead. Mr. Overload and Chase. Can I have to see what these drivers have for each other? It's been a lot of fun to watch these two absolutely go after. You can see the emotion and, and, and the passion in their drives. They are very aggressive in what they do. They want to make absolutely sure they can give it all they have in the moment. This is what it counts right now. Top 12 into top 6. One of these are going home. One of these are going to be advanced to potentially win the thing.
both these drivers, no slouches in their respective roles. They're both very good at this one. Either of these two can win the whole thing. Here we go for Zoo Ransom in the lead. Not quite as much angle this time for that initiation, however, but hitting the line nicely. Mr. Overload all over the door in the chase. Falling out a little bit. Aggressives for the touch and go. Number three, Zoo Ransom not quite all the way out. And once again, we'll see themselves pushing wide into the final corner. Doesn't overcook it and recovers nicely for the center of the corner. At least holds a line, but still not running that consistent second half of the run is Zoo Ransom. Maybe the nerves get to them in the second OMT. Well, it depends on your perspective on consistency. It seems like they're consistently inconsistent throughout th throughout that final turn. But um, uh, the beginning half of the lead run from Zoo Ransom was uh, fantastic. And the chase right next to each other like you i don't think you could get much closer than over uh, overload was to uh ransom through that one turn there um uh once again though i think just running uh, just too wide into that final corner we're seeing ransom is gonna have to fight back from a deficit again yeah it could very well be just that i think this time mr overload can put down a solid lead uh, Zoo's gonna have to answer it in kind, needless to say. Really got to make sure that the consistency stays put in the, in the sections of the course where they were making mistakes last time around. You got to believe Zoo Ransom uh, is gonna need to do something here pretty special. Mr. Overlord potentially sitting on a slight advantage. Uh, yes, the proximity was not quite there, but the line was neither there for Ransom as well in his lead. So points on the table for both drivers in the leads and the chases. This could once again come down to a very close decision, depending on how the second half of this run goes. Mr. Overload in the lead will throw on that initiation. Gets down to the inside beautifully. Zoo pushing out a little bit wide, but will recover nicely and gets back in on the door. Ooh, a really awkward charge. Exit in the first corner is going to the, cause that proximity to be lost out. And we've seen it time and time again here. And once again, it's going to come and bite Zoo Ransom. Oh, all kinds of style for Mr. Overload in that transition. Over the final <laughs> corner. Gets it down where they need to be. Zoo Ransom not there in the picture as well. I think this one may be a little little more clearly cut yeah gotta i gotta agree with you there it's just so unfortunate that ransom had uh run just that just that little bit wide the two of them once again celebrating with little donuts there uh together but uh yeah like fantastic um a chase from ransom in run two but it seems like uh overload was just able to uh, get the distance between the two of them. You know, it seems his car is a little bit faster, a little bit, uh, a little bit more keen, and uh, through the final turn as well. Overload definitely making sure he's staying online. Um, but Ransom was, uh, he wasn't gone. He wasn't you know, like he was within uh, sight. So we're gonna have to yeah. see what the judges uh, think here. No, I do like Mr. Overload's chase a lot better simply because they didn't awkwardly charge like Zoo Ransom did out of one. That allowed the consistency and the proximity to be way closer throughout the remainder of the course, barring what happened in the final corner. But though, remember, Zoo Ransom did push it in pretty deep into that final corner, maybe also causing that gap to show a little bit more than what it typically is. Yes, it is a, the job of the chase driver to match what the lead does, but when you make a mistake like that, um, you know, I, I would much rather keep it close. And yes, a decision has been made. Mr. Overload is going to be advancing the next round of competition. He will be taking down Zoo Ransom in this OMT. What a battle. Couldn't agree more. Like, fantastic battle from the both of them. That was like a... That was a... Was that a double OMT? My memory is terrible. <laughs> it was a double OMT. Like, fan fantastic driving from the both of them. Uh, unfortunate to see... Oh, oh uh, Cisco, you're leaking Ransom. the script. Cisco, yeah. you're leaking the script. <laughs> Yayo is not the winner. Oh. The battle hasn't even started. This is going to be Ankar 1138 versus Yayo in the Dodge Viper in chase. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, and, and, and by the way, an update from the iRacing service. Uh, the, the leader is pitting now. The leader is pitting now. The leader is pitting now. It's happening in my ears right now. Oh, God. <laughs> I, need, I need to mute iRacing real quick. Hold on. Okay, we're good. We're good. No, 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 it was, it, it was just the, 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 the bug when the leader pits and the spotter freaks the heck out because he's parked on the line. <laughs> I, I just heard it 20 times in a row. I had to mute it. Okay, here we go then. This battle will continue on in top 12. Ant Car 1138 versus Yayo 187 420. Dodge Viper versus Camaro Battle. 
Both drivers running street variations of the car. There's the initiation for Ant Car in the lead. That Camaro putting on the angle, running a little bit wide on the exit of the inner zone, but gets to the outer zone or touch and go really nicely. Transitions then across for the remainder of the course. Yayo not quite there in the picture. Starts to aggress later on in the run. Ant Car getting all the way up to those zones beautifully up in that lead position with all kinds of angles. Well, the Viper will aggress later on. Oh, contact being made. Pushes into the right front tire of Yayo in the lead and tries to overtake even an awkward chase for Yayo in the second half of the run. Gets in back into the door, but really has a hard time keeping that car in lockstep and chase and almost making a, an illegal overtake of sorts. Yeah, it seems like uh, it doesn't seem like Yayo is able to get set in the car. It just seemed like uh, the car was just fighting him every step of the way. It didn't want to kick out. And then when it kicked out, it was it, it just seemed really unsettled. And it's really unfortunate. Uh, Ant Car doing a fantastic job in the lead, though. Uh, Yayo is going to have to work really hard in the next run to try and make up the uh, the little disadvantage he's found himself in. Well, if I know anything about Dodge Vipers, as I am pretty versed in these cars now, as we've seen them time and time again, they're very, very fast chassis. Gotta believe that Yayo might be able to get some kind of a gap here for his lead. You can see it. That car staying shallow on the angle, able to close in on Ant Car so aggressively. He has to check it up in so many awkward areas to keep it behind Ant Car. So you like to think maybe the speed advantage is going to be leaning towards Yayo in this 2015 Dodge Viper SRT. Gonna have to see what it has in contrast to the Camaro. Now in chase, both drivers rolling off of the line. Second half of this top 12 battle. Oh, Yayo gets Whoa. sliced with initiation. The flick initiation Whoa. is beautiful. I'm with you on that one, Liz. As now, Yayo going to start running down the line, try to start pulling away. Ant Car not in on the door at all. Cannot close in that gap. The Viper gripping up, pulling away. He's going to go ahead and then take this opportunity to close in at the end of the run. But all in all, Yayo up in his lead position, putting down the style, the sauce, and running Ooh. the line perfectly to boot. Ant Car going to get aggressive at the end of the run, but just really not in the picture for half of that battle, Liz. Oh, my word. Did you see that initiation? <laughs> That's what I like Yayo, to see. Yayo knew that he had to throw down, and he did not disappoint. Like, uh, all the weird uh, tweaks and twitches uh, that we saw in the chase wasn't there in his lead fantastic job uh, you know gave the judges a lot to think about uh i think both cars in run two might have gone uh dropped a tire uh on the exit but uh you know oh my god i love that lead from yayo so much lead for lead it's really difficult to tell who's got it but i think it's gonna go down to chase for chase and if that is the case well yes you could say ant car's proximity was not there yayo's chase was not very good either having a lot of difficulty keeping it in the door tracks you know making a couple of mistakes overcorrecting in some weird places kind of charging and pushing into the door and almost making that overtake at the end of the run as well so yes yayo's run up in the lead was good but honestly is it enough to overtake what we call the uh the the spaghetti and meatballs that was that chase for yayo uh, just really never came to terms in that chase. And, and Ant Car up in the lead also had a lot of style as well. Yes, it was slower, but he still put the car exactly where he needed to be. So lead for the lead, it's close. Does it might come down to that chase for chase. And if that is the case, uh, I don't like where Yayo is sitting right now. Yeah. Uh, it's just after, like, after we've seen their leads, I really, really want to see an OMT. Honestly, like, I just want to see them go again. Uh, we'll see what, how the judges think, but, like, um, I don't know. that uh, The chases are going to be really important to determine who won and who lost, I think. And, it, I, yeah, it's just, uh, we're going to have to uh, see what the judges think. But, yeah, it's just, like, it's just so close to call. Yeah, also, uh... Big shout out to Big Head Ted. Omer time being called. Yes! Omer time in this battle between Ankar and Yayo, as I've not figured out in chat. Thank you so much to Big Head Ted for letting me know. Yayo. <laughs> Yayo. 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 No, Yayo getting the <laughs> home team versus Ankar. And uh, yeah, like, I, I do like seeing it. There are definitely some, some instances where they offset each other based on, you know, the gap being shown. The second half of the battle where Ankar couldn't keep up. Then maybe that was just enough to then overcome the mistakes for Yayo and Chase. So OMT being called. Yeah, I, I could not be more satisfied with this situation. Like I said, you know, uh, lead for lead, very difficult, chase for chase. It, 
you know, lots of mistakes being made there. Uh, let's see what happens this time. Oh, I think Ankar saw what Yayo's initiation was last. Oh, he oh, 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 turn one. How? Ankar, are you kidding me? I don't know how the heck Ankar just does that. And they're going to continue oh, to do that, showing God. their hand. And oh, no. a piece of contact being made. Yayo running into the door of that Camaro with all of that angle in the lead. But I do not think that was Ankar's fault, as he was still definitely on line. Ooh. Ankar getting so saucy with that lead. I think it came oh. down to the point where he didn't want to show his hand early what that car can do. And I think I'm now realizing why Ant Car is driving that Camaro. What the hell did I just watch out of Ant Car in the lead, Liz? Oh. That car was backwards into one. Backwards. Oh. oh my God. I can't even, like, what do I even say to that? <laughs> like it's it's so unfortunate to see uh, Ankar go uh, two tires. It might have been two tires off. There, oh no, but... they got pushed. They got pushed. Oh. No, yeah, oh, yeah, Yayo got into the door okay. and pushed Ankar off. You're talking about the oh. last corner. The no, they were fine. But no, Yayo was not ready for that angle. That Viper could not stay behind it in that section of the course. And and I really don't see any fault with Yayo's line. <laughs> he did just fine for the second half of the course. Those left-handers, he was online. He wasn't pushing wider or over slowing down. No brake application. So I really do think that may be the fault of Yayo. Ankar now going to be in chase. Going to try to keep up with the Viper this time. But <laughs> that was the lead of the day thus far. Totally agreed. So second half of this battle, then Yayo is going to have to do something special here and absolutely pull away. Deserve that table to gapple bees. Can Ant Car do anything? Oh, maybe a little bit of an early initiation for Yayo. Has to correct it and get to the zone where they want it to be. However, as a result, is going to run it deep. Oh, the Viper wants the angle as well. They're showing that car can do it too. <laughs> Up in the lead position. The old Ant Car oh! pushing it awkwardly. No lots of angle for the Viper in the lead. Does not over rotate. This is an awkward battle. Oh, no! way wide this time is Yayo in the lead. Ant Car with the legal overtake is going to work his way around and finish out the run. Really, does it come down to uh, you know that, that that contact to the left hander? Who was at fault there? Yayo may have been over angled, sure, but I don't know if they were actually slowing in that instance. It's really going to come down to the replay. Yayo showing that yes, that viper can do it as well. Unfortunately, though, that last corner and the first corner were not optimal. Yeah, we're gonna have to check the replay on run two just to determine who was really at fault here. That was a fantastic lead run. Uh, uh, Yayo really had to try and, you know, they knew they had to pull out all the stops. Even looking at it now, I'm I'm still not sure. Yeah. You know, Ankar's lead, though, fantastic job, fantastic initiation, fantastic throughout. Uh, we're going to, I, I want to see it again, honestly, but uh, what do you, you, you know think what, happened? You know what this battle reminds me of? Imagine, like, the two samurais in, like, any anime you watch, they meet at the top of the stair. Well, Ant I'm going to tell you right now, Ant Car was given the win. Ant Car is going to be advancing to the top six. But it's kind of like any anime you've ever watched where the two samurai will face off at each other to start. They'll make a couple of slashes. They'll look at each other in the eye and they go, Ho ho, I see you have the skill. Let me answer in kind. And then they both pull up that secondary sword and just start going absolutely ham and showing you know, the, the true potential there in the second <laughs> half of the run. I love it. Uh... It was beautiful to watch. It was really fun to watch. And Ant Car, as a result, will be given the win over Yayo after... It's a very saucy battle, I would like to say. That OMT <laughs> delivering. Couldn't agree more. Like, like I, I, oh, wow, fantastic job from the both of them. Uh, but like, uh, as we saw, Ankar moving on with a win. Um, you know, hopefully this sets the bar for the rest of uh, for the rest of the evening, uh, and we see similarly fantastic driving. And we might just see that from uh, the next two drivers here, Madden Van, uh, Madden Van Venom, the winner of the last round, and uh, Thug Antho. Yeah, Thug Antho, uh, he, he had a pretty saucy battle as well earlier on in 24 to get where he is now. Madden Van Venom, uh, more of a, a clear-cut decision there for his his win. But uh, I, either way, I, I do know for a fact that I think Thug Antho may actually be able to match what Madden Van Venom is about to do to him right here because you know Madden's going to throw on the style, and I don't think he's even shown fully what he can do in the lead just yet. If uh, Ankar can do that, oh, what can Madden Van...
for Venom to do in this car. We may be about to find out as here we go, then back into one for the initiation for Venom, Venom, Venom. Not backwards, but still puts on that 90 beautifully and consistently hitting the line. Transitions across over to Stelgantho, getting in on the door, making sure that gum out a uh, Mercedes up in the lead position cannot get away. Really making sure he's in the picture, staying with the tire tracks, not pushing in entirely. But oh my goodness, that line for Madam Van Venom is beautiful up in the lead, putting on the angle and consistency to boot. What a fun drive to watch between Thug Antho and Madden Van Venom for the first half of this battle. Madden once again showing up to play. Uh, fantastic initiation. We saw practically 90, ang uh, 90 degree angle held fantastically right to the outer zone. Thug Antho doing a great job keeping up, so not letting Madden get away from him. Uh, we're going to see a big dust up here. Uh, I, I would have liked to see a little bit more angle in the chase, but uh, keeping that proximity there, uh, it's a fantastic job either way. Uh, we're going to see how, uh, how they do when they switch positions here, Ian. Yeah, there comes a point where you do need to sacrifice some angle to keep the proximity in check. It was definitely a smart battle. If you could have matched the angle all day long, sure. But, you know, what does that say for the proximity if that Viper is having some slight difficulties keeping up with the pace? I don't know. We're about to find out exactly what this Viper has stacked up versus Man of Venom now in chase. That SLR McLaren versus that Dodge Viper GTS. Will be a really fun way to determine exactly, uh, you know, which one of these two drivers are going to get ahead of each other here in this top 12 battle. It's been fun to commentate so far. Now, Thug Antho opened his lead. We'll need to do something special to match what just happened to Madden Van Venom's lead in the previous round. Both drivers then working off of the line. This is fun. Just commentate. Needless to say, I'm really, really enjoying what I'm watching right now. That Viper pours on the angle for one. Doesn't quite get it backwards, though, but still hits the line beautifully. That McLaren in chase, trying to keep it in the picture. Man and Van Venom kind of aggressing in, a, in an awkward spot and has to kind of shallow out to not make the overtake happen, but still making sure the proximity is in check. Oh, a really awkward late transition for Pathogantho. Uh, he's maybe had a hard time getting the back end of that Viper to rotate in time. Still does so enough soon enough to get to that inner zone, but yeah, you can definitely see it mess up. Man and Van Venom going into that final corner, that car holding that angle to the left a little bit longer than you'd like to see, and then transitions a little bit late. Yeah, but uh, I, I got to give uh, Madden some fan, uh, some commendation for uh, the amount of control he has over that Mercedes. Uh, he saw Thug Antho having a bit of a trouble, uh, a, a bit of a problem down in the run two on your bottom right there. Late transition there, and he knew exactly what was happening. He hit the brakes, uh, tried to make sure that he wasn't going to be passing him or, uh, you know, uh, running into him or anything. Fantastic control there. We're going to have to see what the judges think, but, uh, you know, I think the advantage is definitely weighing heavily on uh, last round's winner. Yeah, Madam and Venom probably uh, putting down a little bit better of a lead than Thug Antho as well, and also considering that mistake for Thug Antho as well. Uh, just a very, very awkward sensation, as we mentioned before. Uh, and, yeah, you would describe Madden's uh, move and chase as a veteran move, you know, just making sure that he doesn't run over that that Viper and, and give the judges more to talk about, you know, lets the, the judges see it play out naturally instead of seeing contact being a, a decision maker. Uh, so I, I do like seeing that in chase. Madden Ven Venom's lead good. Agantho's chase, yes, not as much angle, but the proximity in a couple of different areas may be a little bit better than Madden Ven Venom as well, keeping that car in the picture in chase. So uh, judges are going to be talking this one over, trying to determine who is going to be advancing on. Because all in all, this battle is, is actually relatively close, all things considered. Because Thalgantho's chase was not of any uh, deficit to him. It just really comes down to where they're going to determine the uh, the lead for leads, uh, stacking up against those chases for chases. Absolutely. Um, uh, personally, if, if you ask me, now I'm not a judge, but if you did ask me, um, like I said, you know, I think the advantage is going to Madden, but I, I think the judges are really trying to determine, um, you know, they're, they're trying to determine, like, uh, you know, chase for chase. Uh, is it possible that Madden maybe just wasn't quite where he needed to be for proximity? Um, because, like, uh, Thug Antho, we saw, uh, was right there pretty much throughout the whole run, right on the door there. Uh, Madden uh, taking a little bit of this, uh, a little bit more time, uh, giving a little bit more space, although closing it up uh, on run two at the bottom there, uh, closing it up on the final turn. But yeah, uh, 
I guess we'll see what the the judges think. Uh, they're still deciding. Yeah, other than like kind of cutting in the line a little bit for the two left-handers, I don't think I can really fault Madden's chase. I don't think there's any world where you want to try to chase out that Viper going into the final corner as well, where he's running it wide. That could cause even more problems as well. I definitely wanted to keep it to his line and play it safe. Yeah, other than that small little cut where he's maybe a little more to the inside of the tire tracks of uh, Thugantho in Madden's chase, I can't really fault it. And at the same time, yeah, you can also say, you know, yeah, other than the lack of angle for the chase of Thugantho, you know, I can't really fault that chase either. So, uh, yeah, a little bit of a closer battle. It really just comes down to uh, what the judges value more uh, in, in the lead runs or the chases. So... It's all in their hands at this point. They're looking at three plays just like we all are. Trying to make that decision to decide who of these two will be advancing to your top six. And one thing I noticed, too, on run two for uh, for Madden, there might have been a bit of a straight in, like, a, after the first turn here. A fantastic uh, job uh, just trying to stay on the doors, but it seemed right there that might have been a straight in. Uh, you know, it didn't quite transition as snappily or as fast as you'd like to see. Uh, that might be what be give. Uh, that might be what is giving the judges a bit of pause for thought. Yeah, and then looking left side by side as well, you can almost see Thug Antho do something pretty similar. It's not nearly as slow a transition. He kind of snaps it to start the move from right to left, but he does also have this really weird pause in the middle where the tires stop breaking smoke as well in his chase, uh, just in a, a, a different fashion. So almost side by side as well in those chases, two two similar things that will be happening. However, I think the cars rear ends were still shifting to the point where they can call it. And yes, that is going to be the decision being made. Madden Van Venom. Oh, do we have the correct decision on screen? <laughs> there we go. Madden Van Venom, go. I want to make sure I was correct, is given the win. He will be advancing to the next round of competition. Yep. Uh, fantastic uh, showing from Madden. Uh, really unfortunate to see, uh, you know, because like Slug Antho really, uh, you know, obviously was putting it all out there. Um seemed like just the the mistakes they made uh in the final sector of their uh lead run was just uh too much to to make up for uh but uh madden will be advancing and uh we're gonna be seeing some fantastic stuff yet to come oh yeah ao maddie was a very very stylish and consistent driver with their leads earlier as well the pineapple head in this viper quite quick he definitely has the speed to show so again this is another one of those stylistic matchups matchups rather where uh they could offset each other much of we saw that viper versus uh subaru battle so we're gonna see how this one plays out and see a, a similar similar thing potentially about to happen here is there's the initiation for maddie with the angle gets down to the inside beautifully doesn't need an over angle doesn't need to get too saucy with it and oh Ooh. interesting contact the pineapple head getting into the the proximity in an awkward place he's gonna run into the back of maddie closing it back in nicely anyways for the second half of this run oh he goes wide Whoa. maddie almost getting overtaken cuts off the path for pineapple head pineapple head was looking for that overtake he knew that was gonna be his ticket in potentially but maddie smart in the way he brings that car back over and completely shuts the door on pineapple head taking away that option absolutely you know that uh like uh that we're gonna have to see what this contact ends up looking like right here that that's eh, all pineapple I know, like it might have been yeah it, uh, pineapple just getting a little bit too close on that transition there but as maddie started drifting a little bit too too wide there pineapple had uh, pineapple had like noticed that gap saw an opportunity tried to take it but Maddie uh, not having any of it, trying to close that door and uh, prevent the decision being taken out of the judge's hands. But we'll see what happens on our uh, on the next run here with uh, as they switch positions with uh, Pineal Pineapple Head in the lead now and Maddie in the chase. Yeah, we definitely saw in the way Pineapple was able to close that gap back up to Maddie. That thing does have the grip. It's going to be a really similar situation to where I think Maddie needs to keep that car in the picture, pour a little less angle into it and chase, and try to make sure he can at least stay with that Viper up in the lead. Viper's very strong chassis. They're here for a reason in Troves today for round number two. Let's see what Maddie can do. In contrast to the Viper in the lead, Pineapple Head will initiate with a very nice line and consistent angle into the corner. Doesn't quite get out to that touch and go. Transitions back. Oh, I take back everything I just said earlier about this Viper. He's got angle to show in this tune, and that's going to allow Maddie oh. to stay close. A tire being dropped for the Pineapple Head, unfortunately, in that outer touch and go. Recovers it, though. Doesn't go completely off. Doesn't bend it, and a really weird straighten for Maddie as well in the final corner. Oh, and a tire drop for Pineapple Head in his lead so goodness me once again Liz we have more judging contention it's never a clear cut today so it seems that seems to be the theme of round 
down. Yeah, it's just... Wow, that is an eventful uh, second run that we just saw there. Um, Pineapple had definitely no slouch there, keeping the angle very consistent. We didn't see very many bobbles there. Uh, fantastic control out of there. We did see them uh, run just a little bit wide there, maybe possibly on the transition, another tire drop. And then on the exit of this corner, yet another tire drop. This, I don't know, there's a lot of mistakes made from both drop. Uh, Oh, we got a decision here, and it looks like it's going to Maddie. It seems like those tire drops were, in fact, the deciding factor here. Yep, so it looks like it's not going to take long to make this decision. Looks like they're going to go ahead and go ahead and move this along to the next bit with AAO Maddie. Given the win, AAO Maddie will take the win over the pineapple head in a very, very close battle. And um, <clears throat> I believe it might be time to, to cue a, a certain feathered friend who has worked his way from the Mugello circuit over here to Atopolis. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time to cue the chuck. Yes, sir. Our little feather friend will strut his way across the question. Again, guys, this is a thing we do with every broadcast. If you get the, cor the question correct in chat, you will earn the virtual cookie. Employees and contractors of Podium are not eligible. Only the Aww. first response from the participants will be counted, and any response after the first shall be deleted in chat if we can keep on top of it, guys. So remember, if you get this answer correct in the chat, we will hand you the virtual cookie, and I swear by it, I will give you chocolate chip, okay? It's never going to be oatmeal raisin. Forget about it. I am sorry, Keenan. What month and year <laughs> was a topless release for Gran Turismo Sport? What month and year was a topless released for Gran Turismo Sport. If you get that question right in chat, you will learn the virtual cookie. Then I'll give you a hint, guys. Actually, I'm not gonna give you a hint. It's up to you. You guys are smart. You figure it out. <laughs> I was sitting here like, hmm, maybe I should make like a uh, like a new Twitch account and just be like, it's not me. I want those cookies, man. They smell so good. I'm going to be relying on the producer, Cisco, to tell me when the answer has been reached. So, waiting on that result. It's like we have some pretty slow Google hands out here in chat today. You just <laughs> one's got it right away. <laughs> Come on, guys. Use the Google machines. I believe in you. Uh, by the way, we have Opiolu versus uh, Mr. Overload coming up to the line now. The driver's going to start working the way around. Is this the first battle of top 16? Or top 6, rather. Excuse me. All right, so this will be your first top 6 battle. Oh, we're getting there, chat. We're getting there. It's so close. You could do it, I believe. Well, I'm, I'm, I'll give you your, your first lifeline. Yes, you are correct in saying this year, everybody. So it was released this year. All we need to know, what month, guys? What month was the top list release for Gran Turismo Sport? Oh, Jim, you're killing me, man. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter, though. That's your second response. So, uh, eh -eh. All right, we're going to move on to this battle. We're going to pay attention to the chat, guys. If anybody has the correct answer, we will let you know. This is your first top six battle between Mr. Overload and Opiolu. This will be a fun one to watch. So, congratulations to Big Head Ted. You are correct. March 2019 was when the top list came to Grand Trifle Sport. Initiation for Opio Lu with the angle up front. The Corvette has been stylish all day long. He's going to do just that. Unfortunately, not quite getting out to the zone like he needed to. Really big on the angle, though, throughout the left-handed sweeper. Mr. Overload going to take advantage of that angle getting into the and that angle for Opio Lu, that flick back into the right is something that I have not seen anybody do so far today. Consistently hitting that line, a small tire drop at the end of the course. But Opio Lu once again with the giant flick into the final corner. When I heard that Opio Lu and Mr. Overload were going against each other here, I was excited. These two drivers have shown a lot of expertise behind the wheel, a lot of control, a lot of discipline, 
And, uh, of course, in the case of Opio, lose lead, a lot of style, especially right there as you saw him just throw the angle out. It might have tripped Overload up just a little bit there. You saw them hesitate a little bit. And Opio Lu, of course, driving just a little bit too far wide on the exit. Uh, as they switch positions, uh, we're going to have to see what Mr. Overload has to say in response to that. Yeah, Opio has been doing a lot of things with this style of car, the GR3 car, otherwise known as like, you know, the GT3 class that you don't typically see from these cars. They're usually more of a, a grip and speed car, but gosh, Opio Lou putting on the angle like you see from, from a lot of the street variants of these cars. So it's been fun to see him bring that, that, that variation to what this chassis is typically known for. Here we go, that's the second half of this battle. Mr. Overload gonna get their chance at the lead, throwing into turn one just like that. Gets down to that inner clip and out of the touch and go beautifully. That line is solid, the angle is good. Opio Lou gonna try to be aggressive in the proximity as well. Getting in on the door, Mr. Overload still running down that perfect line. Opio Lou getting very aggressive on the back half of this course. Transitions across the bumper and gets back into the door of Mr. Overload, who also is running a solid line all over the back of that lead driver. Oh. Is Opio Lou in chase. Really solid second half of this battle. Wow. Wow, that was a fantastic chase. That was a fantastic lead. This is going to be a very close decision, I think. Uh, I think it's going to go down to lead for lead, though, because chase for chase, they both were fantastic. The proximity was there. Matching the angles, that was there, too, uh, for the most part, at least. Uh, but, like, uh, you know, going into the lead, I... I think that tire drop, that tire drop is going to have to be something to consider uh, for the lead of Opio Lu in round, uh, run one. And then, uh, you know, I don't know. I think that huge, huge uh, transition or uh, huge angle uh, kick out just before the transition might be canceling that uh, tire drop out or rather the other way around. What do you think, Ian? What do you think? Who do you think has the advantage here? You bring up a very similar point, which I was about to bring up as well. I do like what Opio Lu is doing in that part of the course. I haven't seen anybody else really able to, to put the 90 on that hour touch and go and then flick so aggressively to end the run. Uh, really just got to pay attention down to does Opio Lu do it at the correct time for that hour hook? Because remember, that clip is stationed dead center of the rumble strip, and he's going to, oh, absolutely hit it. Perfect. So, you know, it really does come down to how does that offset the tire drop? You know, I'm, I'm just going to be bold and say we're going one more time because why not? But honestly, I think this is going to be a, a, a one more time in my in my genuine opinion based on what I'm seeing. And also, yeah, get, getting told as well, if both these drivers representing Team 666, I'm sure they get plenty of practice against each other. So, you know, it's really starting to show here. Both these drivers can expect each other's moves. They can match each other in other parts of the course they can they, they, they know what is coming they're they're very good in that regard for these two have more laps together with them and their team than anybody else out here in the tournament i always love when team drivers get to face each other late in the going because you know they're they, they bring something to the table that not many other battles typically do yeah i couldn't agree more like uh, uh teammates they really understand each other as you've mentioned and uh i always look forward to these team battles too because you know, uh, you see a lot of proximity. Uh, both drivers understand uh, how they drive, where they pick up speed, where they drop off a bit, so you can maintain uh, that angle and that speed where you need to. Um, but yeah, uh, as you mentioned as well, uh, in run one with Opio Lu's uh, lead there, uh, they're probably having a bit of a hard time discerning how valuable that fan like that meeting that touch and go how f how valuable that was and how it offsets against the against that tire drop fantastic driving from both of these drivers so like this has been a fantastic run yeah the debate and the judging stand must be very very heavy right now they're they're still going at it they're still trying to determine which one of these two are more worthy of this win or if we're going one more time and, you know, as i said my my spirit and my heart says this one's probably the goal one more time just based on the fact how they offset each other through and through so just waiting on the decision then uh really do appreciate everybody out there in twitch land giving us the love and support we've been doing all tournament long and there it is ladies and gentlemen one more time has been called omt for this fantastic top six battle omt more like O OMG, am I am I right? <laughs> <laughs>
Uh, no, nah, but like for real though, like I'm actually excited to see this, you know. Um, it seems as though the judges just really uh, felt like they felt like that um, that fantastic angle on that touch and go uh, made up for that tire drop. Hopefully, we'll see uh, some uh, like another fantastic run from these two. Honestly, I can like I can watch these guys go forever. They like teammates. They know what they're doing. They're just really showing uh, what they're best at right here. Yeah, Team Six 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 is here. Needless to say, four of the top six drivers <laughs> here are, are represented. You know, so like Team Six Six Six. They're strong. They know what they're doing. Here we go, then. This OMG battle. Opio in the lead. Mr. Overload in chase. Going to try to make up for stuff that was awkward in the last battle. But this time, oh, it's almost exactly the same thing, guys. Opio Not Ooh. quite getting up the touch and go. Some contact being made. Oh, there's the angle again. Not as aggressive with it this time. However, hopefully this time, Opio can keep it on the course. As all over the door in chase with the proximity is Mr. Overload. The entirety of this run and the oh. tire drop. Once again for Opio exiting that final corner. You know, I wonder how much of that was, uh, I, I, I don't know. There was a, a little bit of a network hiccup we saw there that might have been a lag bump uh, causing Opiolu to go uh, take a tire drop. And as we see there, that might have also been a tire drop, if not very, very close. Right Fantastic edge. job in the in the lead there, though, from Opiolu. And honestly, like... Yeah, just fantastic lead, fantastic chase. We're going to see what happens as they switch positions. Yeah, I'll be curious to see how the second half of this battle is going to be tackled. Both drivers are working their way back down to that starting line. It's close. I can tell you this much. It's it's close. Unfortunately, I don't think Opiolu has that really big style on touch and go three to lean back on to offset the drop this time. So I think this time you're going to be seeing some some super aggression for Opiolu in that chase position if the, the spotters are telling them anything about what they need to change for this run. If they even have spotters, I don't know. I'm really curious, guys. I want to <laughs> a lot more about this series because you know you guys really do intrigue me. It's a lot of fun to watch. And I want to learn more. So here we go, Ben. Initiation for Mr. Overworld this time. Getting on the angle, getting on the line, all the way out to the normal strip as well. Opiolu keeping it in the picture, but not quite in on the door. Small break, check to correct for what's going on in that lead position. Gets aggressive into the tire tracks Ooh. of Mr. Overload. Transitioning, falling back a little bit for that final corner now. Losing on the proximity, not quite down on that inside line. Oh. Mr. Overload, but Opiolu is aggressing at the end and pushing into the left side. Oh, or the right side, rather, of Mr. Overload as they exit the final corner. I don't think that tire drop was a fault of Mr. Overload. I think they legit just got pushed off into the grass. But still, banger of a battle again in this OMT. Goodness me. Uh, Liz, I'm going to be bold again. Or we're going again. Yeah. <laughs> this is going OMT, I feel I it. I can definitely see your argument here. You know, fan uh, both uh, were fantastic runs from both drivers, but... You know, we see in run two, uh, you know, they got very, very close. Uh, it seemed like uh, Opio Liu on the chase uh, just knocked uh, Mr. Overload's rear end just off the course. That might have been Opio Liu's fault. And as well, as you can see in the initiation of his chase, uh, he was taking another tire drop in the initiation uh, into the first turn. So I think the judges are going to have to look carefully at that. And then, uh, and yeah, it seems we have yep. a call here, Ian. Yeah, Opio Lu is going to be given the win. Opio Lu will be advancing to your final three and that barn burner of a team battle between he and Mr. Overload. My hat's off to both of them. Those were some fantastic battles. Absolutely. You know, uh, judges obviously going for uh, style and uh, probably uh, accuracy to the line. Um, it seems as though, like, uh, OPLU definitely had a couple, uh, 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 tire drops here and there, but, um, ultimately, uh, it wasn't to, uh, it wasn't enough to, uh, offset the win there. Uh, congratulations to both drivers, though. That was a fantastic battle to watch. So what is up with Ronan Cervoni in this competition, always getting paired up against the guys who seem to throw more angle into their cars than anybody else? Once again... We're looking at another situation. You remember Antcar in his top 12 battle, uh, 110 degrees into turn one. Uh, he's going to have to once again match up against a driver who is going to be throwing on the angle in that super fast and super gripped up Subaru. Uh, we're going to see, and right away, we're going to see what that means in a chase position as now both drivers working their way off the line. and car leaning and Ronan Serfoni in chase for your next top six battle. 
Well, let's see what they got. We've seen Ankar do a lot of crazy stuff here. We'll see what happens. Oh, he's here. doing it again. Lead. Another one, another one. 90 degrees straight into there, holding the angle fantastically. Going into the next turn, <laughs> Ronan Cervoni trying to maintain the lead, uh, the angle there, but like in the lead. Fantastic oh. angle through and through. A little bump from Ronan there onto the onto the lead car there. Ant car is still doing angle, 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 angle is the story for this battle. Oh yeah, my god, this, Ian. But, but this time Ant car was not consistent with the angle, unfortunately. That messed up the line, especially through the double left-hander. Definitely throws on the angle in a, a place that you don't see a whole lot of cars doing, which is that first left-hander on the inside right along that rumble strip. Once again, backwards into turn one, mind you. Maybe pushing a little bit wide on the eggs of the inner zone, but gets to the touch and go nicely. But right here, when he pours on the angle, you're going to see that car kind of have to straighten out to get back out to the outer zone, entirely missing that touch and go number two on the outside. And uh, you can see Ronan Cervoni making a bunch of corrections, trying to keep it behind that offline Camaro through that section, even kind of pooping into the door a little bit there through that final corner, completely gripping up and not able to stay behind Ant Car through a good section of the course. So, some things to keep in mind Ant Car's lead, maybe not this time as good as previous leads, but still a pretty saucy lead nonetheless. Absolutely. You know, um, looking back at it now, I can definitely see uh, the, the he wasn't quite as accurate to the line there uh, in his lead, you know, but Antcar has been throwing a lot of style points out there, really giving the judges a moment to consider what do we value more? Do we value accuracy or style? Well, that answer and more about to be found out here in just a couple of seconds the second half of this battle getting set and underway this time Ronan yeah once again not pointing on the angle running all over that rumble strip and trying to get away from that Camaro in chase pushing out wide all the way out to the rumble doesn't get the grass though and Antcar doing a decent job keeping it up with that lower angle Subaru in the lead position oh a slight correction on the angle going into the final corner for that lead driver a really aggressive in chase Antcar pushing in trying to keep it with them but yeah, the difference in leads again, guys, the styles, you can see it. It's the, the, the style and angle versus speed and just, just overall power and grip for Ronan Cervoni in their leads. Yeah, and we see uh, right in the beginning of the lead on run two uh, for uh, Antcar, he took a little bit of grass going into the initiation, but uh, up in the lead there with Ronan Cervoni uh, seems to be uh, sticking to the, uh, the preferred line. Uh, a little bit more accurately but uh, like I mentioned before you know uh, the judges are really gonna have to consider here is it is it style or is it speed uh, and I mean I know what my answer is I love <laughs> style I love the angle but uh, you know that's my opinion I'm just a commentator well I'm curious to see what the judges are going to value in this battle as well because there's definitely some upsetting points here uh, to, to say for the leads, but again, you gotta talk about Ant Car's lead being very inconsistent, though, which is gonna be ultimately his downfall. I think if he was able to do that lead and keep it online, this would be a little bit closer of a call here, but just simply due to the fact that he was just really, really sloppy, and, and yeah, you can say, sure, Ronan's uh, lead maybe not as deep, as much angle, but he still hits the clips for the most part, he still puts the car where it needs to be and doesn't get, you know, the two out of sorts through a good chunk of the run, so really it's gonna come down to what do the judges value more in this decision, I really got to think that based on what we see here, it's going to determine, you know, how either these two drivers are going to tackle these final battles, whichever the two do advance. And uh, looking back at the replays, too, we can definitely determine uh, proximity is another uh, big thing, too. Uh, you know, the judges are probably going to be looking at this and, you know, oh, we uh, have oh, a... Oh, in. Ant Car will be advancing to wow. the final three. Uh, I'm not too sure what that means as far as the grand scheme of things with the seeding goes, because remember the guy with the highest seeding into the final three gets the bye to the final. Uh, I'll need to double check my stats to see what's going on now. But yeah, that's going to be Ant Car advancing to your final three, whether that's going to be a battle or the very final itself, we will find out very shortly. All right, so we have one more battle left for you in the top six. This is going to be AAO Maddie versus Madden Van Vanum. Which one of these drivers will be advancing to the final? Which one will be seeing their way out? And by the way, I, I have the answer for you guys. By the way, Opio Lu was the number one seed, so he will be advancing to the final. He gets the automatic buy. The winner of this battle will then be facing... Um, will then be facing Ant Car to determine who is going on to the final. So lots at stake here on the right half of the bracket.
first you need to determine who is going to be one of those other drivers advancing to your final round. Matt and Ben Venom in the lead versus AAO Maddie in chase. Here we go then off the line. Mercedes versus Mercedes battle. And on the throttle harp, both these drivers roaring off into turn one with the initiation for oh! Matt and Ben Venom. Puts it in backwards, has to correct it though a little bit through the center, but stays on line nicely other than maybe being a little bit wide on the inside of the course. Gonna push out to the rest of the outer touch and goes the proximity and Chase is there for Matty. Hits the bumper awkwardly though. That's gonna cause a little bit of a loss of proximity, but he closes back in nicely to the center of the final corner, but not quite there all the way through the exit. Regardless, a quality, quality battle to kick off or to end rather the top six of round number two. What do you make of that one, Liz? You know, AO Maddie and uh, Madden Van Venom have been showing themselves to be fantastic competitors in uh, in this round of competition, and this did not disappoint. You know, uh, Madden Van Venom up in the front with a fantastic initiation, fantastic lines throughout, as you would expect. Uh, but uh, AAO Maddie did not say no, did not let himself get uh, get too far away and said, I'm here too, buddy. So, like, this is going to be a fantastic battle, definitely for sure. Yeah, Ben, I, I don't think that at any point in that initiation that um, there was actually, like, a, a really big correction for the lead driver as I, I have lost the production feed. But uh, I, I really didn't see any faults of the lead driver uh, for the uh, the correction back. It's a little bit of a server lag at a, an awkward point. And yeah, I've, I've, we lost the production feed, Cisco. We can't see the battle going on. I can see it now. Okay, so we've got uh, Matty up in the lead doing a fantastic entry as we saw last uh, in the last oh, there round we go. of competition there. Uh, going fantastically, following the line as you would want. Matt and Van Venom not quite as close in proximity as you would want. Matty is going into the final turn here now. Ooh. Ooh, a little bit of a bump from Madden. We're going to see how this uh, comes in here. And that uh, is Matty finishing it off. Oh, we had a... We, we had a mistake happening uh, on our end. We apologize. The recording for that run is not going to show. We only have the replay of this run. And that, we don't even need the replay. A decision has been made. The winner of this battle in advancing to your final three is... A.A.O. Maddie will take down wow. last round's winner... He will be advancing to your final three in a very well-deserved win. Absolutely, and quite a shock, too. Madden Van Venom has been performing fantastically throughout doing, uh, you know, winning the last round of competition with uh, uh, Gaming Drift Series, but it seems it wasn't enough to overcome Maddie's uh, consistency, Maddie's angle. Uh, unfortunate to see, but Maddie has been showing up and has not been any slouch. So, uh, coming up into the next uh, rounds of competition, we'll see what happens. Yep. So that then means that your next battle is going to be A A O Maddie versus Ant Car, and oh boy, that's going to be a fun one side West to match up, and then Opiolu in the final. You know what's funny? The final three drivers have been the ones who have been on the angle. I have, I, I, I am back. We are good to go. I, I realize now that Opiolu, one of the most angled GR3 cars we have, uh, you know, that battle between Madden Van Venom and Maddie, they were, they were very stylish drivers in a way that matched up as well. And then on top of that, you also have uh, Ant Car, who is, you know, probably the most backwards driver we have into turn one every single round. <laughs> so this is these are going to be some fun battles to call. I get the feeling we, we may not have a winner so easily. These battles, we could be going home to a few times. I get the feeling. But all these drivers now, the final two battles are afoot. It all comes down to this. You have to perform now. You have to put down the run of the round so far if you want to have any hope at taking down Opio Lu after you advance from this round. AAO Maddie versus Ankar, who is going to be seeing their way into the final? Oh, I, I don't even want to make a prediction to ter determine who's going to win this one. Like, these, all these drivers are just so good. We've been seeing so much fantastic, ex like, so much skill behind the wheel. 
I don't know who's. Do you have a prediction? Can I have zero prediction? prediction. There is no prediction to make at this point. You just call it. You enjoy it because we're about to see some fire battles to end round number two. And Car in the lead, throwing in the angle again, Whoa! going backwards into turn one and hits the line again. Ayo. Oh, Maddie is doing a beautiful job up in that lead, uh, in the chase position, rather, keeping it up with Antcar, really being aggressive in on the door. Holy cow, this is so good to watch. Both drivers are so stylish, so smooth, and Antcar is undressing this course, but Maddie all over the door to close it out. This is amazing. Replay on screen, you can see the angle being thrown up in the lead by Ant Carr once again, and Matty not getting away. He is staying in on the door, especially in the second half and the final corner. So good to watch as both of these drivers are all over it in this battle. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. That was a fantastic uh, stylistic showing from, uh, uh, from Ant Car uh, Ant Carr there, all going way over 90 degrees in the first. Yeah, yeah, this is fantastic to see. You can both see now the drivers as they transition for that final corner. Ant car aggressive again on the angle, and Maddie aggressing super late on the end of that line as well, all over the door and the back bumper of Ant car. Now both drivers on the line. Yes, we are both back. Here we go. Ao Maddie in the lead. Ant car in chase. How are we ending this one out here for the second half of your second to last battle? Are we going to get a Richter? Are we going OMT? Let's find out together as Maddie does the big flick into the final corner. Oh, and Carr is all over the door in the proximity, but kind of loses out a little bit. A tire drop for Maddie, unfortunately, exiting the first corner. He's going to see himself maybe getting some deductions, but oh, and Carr is all over the door, getting super aggressive in an awkward spot, causing an early word separation as they work the way down into the final corner. Maddie getting very, very saucy with the angle in the final corner, and Carr making a couple of the bobbles but recovers nicely for the end of the course getting very very aggressive where it counts but i don't know if that's going to be enough to take down what the first half of that battle was ant car making a few mistakes on the proximity prox getting very very aggressive in some off positions unfortunately that might not be enough to take down what was that first run i'm uh i'm gonna have to check the replays here <laughs> struggling with this he's trying to get the production stream back on but uh, yeah, I can see it now. A fantastic first run from uh, Ant Car and Maddie really had to throw down to try and get things going. Ant Car taking a little bit of a bump into the into uh, into Maddie there in uh, run two. Ah man, this is. I want to see this again. I want to see another Roman T. Where do you think the advantage is? Uh, I think right now, based on what may happen to Chase, it really all depends on uh, did, did Maddie check up? Did Ant Car slow down? I, I do think that contact we saw at the end of the second run is going to determine who advances from this round. I don't see this one going OMT because somebody needs to be at fault for that one. It's either Maddie making an inconsistency in his power up front. Or did Ant Car aggressively charge? The judges are going to be looking at that one pretty hard. And not to mention as well, the angle for Maddie and his chase really wasn't that great either. So there's um there was a tire drop for Maddie as well in his lead. But Ant Car, yeah, I don't know. You know, this is this is this is really curious. Matt's got tire drops, but Ant Car's got mistakes. It's it is, this could be pretty close. Yeah, um, it's the judges are definitely taking a little bit of time, but we've seen. Uh, throughout uh, this round of competition, we've seen uh, the judges taking a lot of time and a lot of decisions. You know, uh, these drivers have been showing a lot of skill. This course is producing a lot of fantastic uh, runs here, fantastic angle and everything. Uh, I I don't know. Like, I'm still really like, uh, oh, what do you call it? Still absolutely pleasantly surprised by uh, almost completely backwards on Ant Car's uh, initial uh, initial turn there, um, but yeah, we're gonna have to see what the ju uh, what the judges are uh, evaluating here. Yeah, definitely a lot to talk about here. So just waiting on that result. Plays on screen. 
all of you at home could then join us in determining what you think is going to be. Let us know in chat. Who do you think has got this win? Who's going to be taking Opiolu in that final? Yeah, that car's lead pretty solid. No, no tire drops being shown, and there is the call one more time between Ekkar and A.O. Maddy. We are not done yet. We still don't know who is going to be taking Opiolu in the final. Oh, this... I, I'm so glad to see this, you know. Uh, I feel as though there were enough mistakes in both runs that, you know, like, it, it definitely called for one more time. Uh, you know, you, you really want to see them uh, clean up this second uh, this second uh, run through for these pair of runs. Um, Antcar is able to throw on the style, uh, but Maddie hasn't been shrugging shoulders there, hasn't been just sitting there like, eh, I'll just let it happen. He's been having a fantastic answer, so we'll see what happens here, see if we can make a decision. Yeah, we appreciate all of you out there in Twitch land joining us for round number two. We have just surpassed the third hour of this broadcast, and you are all out here still super strong and showing your support for your teammates. And as a fan, we appreciate you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. We're not done yet. Two more battles to go. OMT once again being called. Ankar in the lead. AO Maddie and Chase. There's the initiation for Ankar. Throws on the angle again. Gets down to that rumble strip beautifully as well. This time, Maddie way more prevalent in Chase. Keeping the angle on in the proximity as well. A couple of bubbles here and there, but all in all, keeping it in the tire tracks of Ankar up in elite position. Correcting the mistakes earlier, but oh, look at that flick for Antcar in the lead position. Maddie was ready for it, though. He backs out in time, closes back in where it counts. Really aggressive in on the door for the final bit as well. That was a much better first run this time around. Yeah, totally agreed. Uh, you know, Maddie in the chase there, he was a lot more present here, and he really needed to be. Um, it like Antcar once again throwing the style out there. Would have liked to see a little bit more angle from Maddie, but he made up for it with the proximity. Uh, we're gonna have to see what happens when they switch positions and see if uh, Zat makes any uh, changes here. And we see in the exit uh, or, or towards this uh, final turn here, yeah, like a uh, ant car in the lead seems to be a bit far from the from where you'd want them to be. We'll see what happens in the next uh, in the next run here. Yep, second half of this battle is getting set and underway. I do like the consistency this time for Antcar up in his lead position. Puts on the angle where it counts, but also does so in a way where he doesn't need to correct, he doesn't need to straighten out. He keeps it all the way out to those touch and goes, gets into all of the zones. Definitely what you were expecting for in a lead driver, and Maddie was answering in turn. It's the less stuff that we like to see, especially in a, one more time where they have taken the time to learn what the other driver just did in their previous battle. And now we're going to go ahead and switch them around. Second half of this battle underway. A.O. Maddie this time getting his chance at the lead. Ant Car will be getting chase in the Camaro. Mercedes versus Camaro. V8 versus V8. There is the initiation for Maddie. This time, pours it in. Oh, big Ooh. piece of contact for Ant Car. Charging it aggressively. He wants to make sure his presence is felt, but that may be a pretty large mistake as now he's definitely losing out on that proximity towards the end of the run closes back in nicely for that second left hander maddie putting on the angle getting sauce with it across the ball the transition and a contact is going to be made ant car was looking for that overtake but i think he knew he was the one who just sent maddie off into the shadow realm in the final corner plays it nicely <laughs> hits the brakes and does not go for that overtake in the end when the door was open oh ant car with that beautiful lead he just had may have thrown it all away with this chase that is so unfortunate. And Carr's lead was so much better this time around. And uh, on the chase, it was, you uh, had the proximity there, made a huge bump into uh, Maddie in the lead uh, on run two. Heading into uh, the final turn, though, uh, transitioning right across the bumper, tried to get uh, a pass done there, Maddie. Uh, definitely uh, managed to squeak in and say, nope, you're not ha that's not happening. You're not getting past me. But yeah, we're going to have to see what the judges think about that contact there. Yeah, I just I, I do not think that's going to be given the fault of Maddie. I do think Ankar was getting a little too aggressive. That is a decel zone. The leader is within their rights to slow down in that section to set up for the next corner. And Ankar, kind of misjudging it a little bit, gets aggressive where it doesn't need to be. Just boop, right into the back of that car. Pushing that AMG wide, tries to push it in, does not get it. And in third place, ladies and gentlemen, today, it is going to be Ant Car as AAO Maddie will be advancing to go against Opiolu in your final. That, that was a fantastic showing from uh, both of these drivers. Really unfortunate to see Ant Car lose this one because 
you know, throwing all of that angle. It seems like he could not spin. He always had grip in the front, but unfortunately he just wasn't as consistent as he needed to be. And Matty gets the, uh, or no, sorry, uh, Ant Car got third place, my bad. <laughs> Yeah. Right, but uh, in any case, you would have liked to see him in the in in the in the final two. But Maddie instead is moving, advancing on to the final to determine who wins and uh, who gets the second place. Fantastic showing from uh, uh, from Ant Carl though. Yeah, Ant Carl was definitely the one who kind of woke up the rest of the field today and said, "Hey guys, uh, you know we're gonna have to put on the." The angle eventually here, we gotta get saucy with it. Everyone's like, oh God, I think you're right. And after Ant Car's first lead, they're like, yep, here we go, it's time. <laughs> the angle was starting to pour and Ant Car was kind of the, uh, the founder of that today. But we appreciate him and his contributions to this round. This is it then, the final between Opio Lou and AAO Maddie, who is going to be given the win for round number two. Will be Opio Lou, will be Maddie. We're about to find out with that initiation for Opio Lou. The Corvette, rather, doing what it's been doing all day long with this angle and style. Opio Lou is no stranger to this chassis. Maddie keeping himself in the picture. He wants to keep himself in on the door. The big flick into the final corner for Opio Lou. Doing that so many times over and over, unlike so many have done so far today, in a way that is so beautiful to watch. Maddie was not far out in chase either, though. This battle is coming down to the wire. This is going to be a close one. Absolutely, this is gonna be a barn burner. Opio Lou and Maddie showing their skill behind the wheel. Opio Lou, Opio Lou with a fantastic entrance, fantastic angle, but Maddie was back there saying, nah, uh I have the angle too. Staying right on the door, uh, you know, and heading into the final sector, Opio Lou with that just little bit of a, towards the touch and go, having a little more angles and uh, other drivers have had and this time on the exit of the final corner he stays on track he left nothing on the table Maddie is gonna have to push hard in order to uh, you know compete in the in the in the second run he's got a like it's just he's <laughs> yeah wow yeah, no, I know what you mean. Matty uh, also maybe leaving a couple of points on the table in chase in regards to matching angle. Proximity was good, though. That cannot be understated. Now he's going to get his chance at the lead. He needs to put down the lead of the night so far to give himself that fair chance against Opio Lu for this final battle. Here's the initiation. Opio Lu is all over the door of Matty into turn one. Regardless, the lead into turn number one for Matty was beautiful. Look at all the angles he's putting in as well. Opio Lu, though, in the tire tracks. He is absolutely matching, not letting anybody take this Round away from him, an odd bottle for Maddie. Unfortunately, he's gonna cause him to lose out on that outer touch and go into the final corner. They will now go transition into the door. Opio Lou wants it, Maddie wants it. Both drivers putting down the run of the day. Who has what it takes to call themselves the victor of round number two? What a battle! Oh my god, I, I just, I just, what. I, I, I like I, I don't even know how to process what I just saw there. That was just fantastic driving from both of them in both runs. But Opio Lou and Maddie in that in run two, Maddie was throwing down. Consistent run, fantastic run. But Opio Lou was right there. It was almost like synchronized dancing. They were exactly matching each other. Fantastic driving from the both of them. Yeah, that's the thing that Opio Lou did a lot better in his chase in uh, contrast to Maddie. He was keeping it close the entire time, but also doing a way better job at matching the angle in a couple of different aspects of the course. You can see Maddie not quite able to, to match that angle of Opio Lou in his lead, but keeps the proximity close. However, Opio Lou able to match the angle and keep the proximity as check as well. So really Opio Lou putting down the points in chase where it counts. And yeah, a couple of mistakes for Maddie in his lead. Regardless though, both drivers making the runs of the night so far here with this final battle. Do we have a winner? We going one more time? Is it Opio Lou? Is it Maddie? We are going to be finding out in just a couple of short seconds. And I am being told we do have a winner. Could both Opio Lou and AAO Maddie please line up on the front straightaway by the start finish line side by side? Opio Lou and AAO Maddie please line up at the start finish line side by side. You know, that was a fantastic showing uh, from both of these drivers, no matter what happens. And also uh, to all the competitors who uh, uh, who drove earlier today, 
you all should give yourselves a pat on the back. You all, like, had a fantastic showing, threw down, did not let anything uh, stand in your way. And, you know, like, the GDS is doing amazing things for the drifting community for GT Sport. You know, so many fantastic drivers with so much skill behind the wheel. You know, just amazing stuff. Yep, I'm just waiting on getting the winner. I have the winner in my ear. So once the drivers are lined up, we're going to go ahead and then get away with announcing the winner of round number two. Again, everybody in chat, thank you so much for your continued support today. The numbers have been fantastic. And now, ladies and gentlemen, your winner of round number two here at the Autopolis Speedway. He was driving a V8. <laughs> I, I can't think of any more similarities between these cars. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I, I can't do it. I'm sorry, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, your winner of the rear-wheel drive car today is... Opio Lu is the winner of round number two. He is the winner of round number two of GDS at Autopolis with what would be called a master class drive all round long, doing things in this course that not anybody else could quite match all day long. This Absolutely, totally agree with this decision here. Opio Lu showing a lot of talent behind the drive. Uh, behind the but behind the driving wheel of that car, uh, Maddie no slouch either. He definitely oh, no. gave it all uh, his all. But uh, you know, Opio Lu with just a little bit more consistency in this run here, and you know, fantastic job from Opio Lu here to get the win. Yeah, my hat off to Opio Lu. My hat off to Maddie. My hat off to everybody who made their way into the final couple of battles today because they were they were some fun ones. I thoroughly. Ooh. Thoroughly enjoyed that. I'm so glad everybody out there on Twitch and Liz could join me today for these fantastic battles. Guys, that is going to be it for us for now. We're going to go to a quick commercial break and we come back. Francis Piscaramuza and Lizzie are going to bring you the GDS post race show on Podium Esports. I got to get behind the wheel of a GT1 Aston Martin for the next 17 hours, guys. I need to get out of here. Thank you so much for all your support, guys. We are going to see you in just a couple of short minutes.
テンション Welcome back to coverage of the Gaming Drip Series right here on Podium Esports. Well, you saw the result right there. Opio Lu was able to snatch victory away from AAO Matty Hoot. It was a fan bloody tastic race there. As with that, we're going to uh, head down to the paddock right now and talk to the big winner himself. Opio Lu will join us up here in the in the booth and sir congratulations bringing it home thanks, for thanks. Six, six walk us through it what was that last battle like oh that was intense such a good lead you know I didn't actually think I was going to do that well this round so I was really surprised but yeah it's good to good to have a nice good battle at the final so Tonka's team, uh, Team 666, really showed up here, four cars in the final six. And uh, you guys, obviously, uh, you had success with Madame Von Venom in round number one. Now you bring home the victory in round number two. What it, what has been the, uh, what's been working for you guys so well this season? We just really put a lot of practice and time and effort into it before the rounds. So we were practicing as soon as Tokyo finished, you know? So we put a lot of effort into this. Let's pay it off. I'll tell you what, two wins now. What's the uh, what's the outlook look look like for you guys here as we uh, head towards round number three already on the calendar? Um, I'm not sure. It was a really close one with Matty, so who knows what could happen in the future. But we're looking strong. Well, we're heading to a uh, another interesting racetrack. I've never been to Kyoto Driving Park, but. Looking forward to getting there, but Opio Lu will give you the opportunity. Anyone you want to say hello to out there? Anyone you want to say thank you to? Um, so I'd like to say thank you to all the guys at Team 666. Um, I would also like to say thanks especially to Jim, our leader. Um, I'd also like to say thanks to my girlfriend, Suicide. It's really been with me the whole time, giving me motivation. Was that the uh, same... Uh same Camaro we saw earlier on? It was the Viper. Viper, yes. Yeah. yeah. Interesting. Okay, we'll <laughs> add that into the notes for next time. We didn't know that, but either way, congratulations, Opio Lu, on the win here from Atopolis. Thank you. Absolutely. Congratulations. So with that, well, there's there's some uh, behind-the-scenes cliff notes that we'll know for next time. That's, that's yeah. pretty awesome, nonetheless. Uh, Hoot, I'll, uh, do you want to go ahead and uh, I'll send it down to you and you can talk with Manny here? Sure, absolutely, you know. Um, so, Maddie, you uh, f did a fantastic job. Uh, welcome to the booth here uh, on Podium Esports. Um, so, uh, walk us through the final battle there that you had there with, uh, with Opiolu. Uh, I guess I was just like, yeah, I'm going to send it, and then after a month, uh, I just... And they realized, oh, I'm bad. So, um, I, I I saw you like throwing a lot of uh, uh, angle there, uh, especially in response uh, to some of the bigger angle you've seen. You know, um, doing these really aggressive flicks. Um, you know, uh, it shows that you have a lot of skill behind the car and it felt like you were quite comfortable out there would would you agree with that were you comfortable behind the wheel i mean i'm always comfortable around the wheel so i'm just used to doing this uh sorry this stuff and oh. uh uh, uh lastly like uh what do you have uh planned for uh the next round here as it goes to kyoto um because I, I imagine second place is fantastic, but you always want to get that. I mean, yeah, I would like to continue having mostly just fun and always like try to win, but that couldn't happen always, so I will just send it and see what it's going on. All right, well. We'll give you the opportunity, Manny, really quickly here against all odds and uh, all your friends out there in the uh, Czech Republic. Who you got to say hello to and thank you to out there? Uh, firstly, I want to say thank you to all the GDC and you guys. 
then to my AO fan and then lastly for my Rose Abra family because he couldn't come here because of his issue. Shout out to them. All right, well, that's AO. Maddie finishes second here on the podium. Maddie, congratulations, and uh, we hope to see you in Kyoto here in uh, November. Yeah, for sure. That's AO, Maddie, and I'll uh, go ahead and grab Ankar, who's going to be uh, third here. So we'll bring him up. Ankar, you finished third here on the podium. Walk us through that uh, that battle for third there. Ankar, you got us? Hello. There we go. Thank now we got the, uh, the driver out of the UK, Ant Car. You bring it home third here. Walk us through that battle. Uh, I, I told my team pretty much before we started that it's my 21st birthday in a few days, so I was just going to send it as much as I could. Uh, and that's what I've done. So I'm quite happy with third. Lost to a great drifter. No regrets, really. Well, I'll tell you what, Team 6-6 six six has really showed, and we talked to your teammate who brought home the victory. That's two in a row for you guys, and, uh, well, you you haven't gotten the one yet. We had the Kyoto coming up next here. Is that going to be, uh, are you going to try and bring home the victory from there? Uh, well, Season 2, I won that track, so we'll see if I can bring it back again. Uh, try a different car this time. Uh, my Camaro is fairly new, didn't really know what to expect in under battles, but it done well. Well, yeah, I guess uh, that was another question uh, we were having up in the booth. The Camaro brand new. What was that car like for you guys out there? It's, you know, it was kind of untested. It, well, it's a, it's a good car. Uh, I know a lot of people seem to think it's got a lot of grip and it struggles. Uh, but if you're like throwing big angles, it seems to hold it, which is quite nice, I suppose. Uh, just, yeah, once you're entered, you can't really change, so. <laughs> Just sort of thought I'd take what I had and just run with it. Well, Ant, we'll give the opportunity. Anyone else you want to say hello to and thank you to out there? Uh, honestly, I just want to thank my team. My team leader, Jim, uh, was on, the, on your stream pretty much commenting the whole way through. Uh, obviously, Madden for putting up the amazing win last time and OP for winning this one. It's just, yeah. And you guys, obviously, for doing the commentating and streaming all right well that's ant car 1138 and congratulations and uh, we'll see you Thank one more you. time here from kyoto <laughs> see you soon all right and that should uh do it for our interviews here so well lizzie that'll that'll kind of begin to wrap things up for us here what what are your uh takeaways here from to uh today's race here at atopolis your first drift broadcast here in the gran turismo world and a second broadcast with us here on podium esports uh reactions excitement what was it like out there man uh these competitors did not disappoint in the slightest uh you know i had my hesitations about gran turismo sport you know a uh, fantastic driving simulator but the drifting community was practically unheard of to me at the time uh, and then uh, Gaming Drift Series comes in, uh, has their event uh, broadcasted by Podium. I watched uh, as much as I could, and, you know, I was shocked the amount of skill that these people have uh, behind, uh, behind the wheel, despite the fact that, like, Gran Turismo really doesn't give drifting enough of a fair shake, you know, like, it's just a fantastic job from all of these drivers, you know, shows how much pa like how much um, how much fun you can really have uh, putting your passion into your favorite video games and, uh, you know, just going out there and having fun with your buddies and with other competitors. Uh, I would be excited to go back uh, for more commentary for this series if that would be OK. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. We're going to be trying, and uh, we've been working you uh, in and out to some of these broadcasts, so we'll be seeing Lizzie Dubowski here before too long with that. But with that, we're going to say goodbye here from Autopolis. And what we will do is we're going to send you over to the guy who just left. He he took a, uh, it was a supersonic jet back over to, uh, to Zol Circuit Zolder, where he's going to be racing in his Aston Martin DB9R. 
or DBR9, I should say, in Flash, RAR Chevette, is where we are heading, so we hope you hang out with us and go see what the uh, the other half of the commentary team here from this evening is up to. But for everybody here behind the scenes who makes it happen, for myself, Cisco Scaramuza, for uh, our sponsors today, AV Sport, as well as everybody behind the scenes at Podium who makes it happen, DJ Lion, as well as Gary Sexton, James Pike, and uh, myself, of course. <laughs> And, uh, of course, everybody else who makes it behind the scenes happen here at GDS. Of course, we have to give a big shout-out to Nick. That's been Lizzie Kubowski. I've been Cisco Scaramuzzi. You heard Ian Flash. We're going there right now. So please hang tight with us. We're heading there right now. Thank you very much. And we say goodnight from Autopolis International Racing Course. We'll see you around the turn. Good night, everybody.